ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. We are in Prairie View, Texas, about 50 miles northwest of Houston for two of the FCS's highest scoring offensive teams over the last couple of years. Prairie View A&M here at Panther Stadium out of the SWAC hosting Sam Houston State, ranked number three out of the Southland Conference. And from the booth, along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, I'm Eric Clemens welcoming you to Thursday Night Football action right here on ESPN and the family of networks. Well, we had Prairie View lead the nation in scoring in 2015. Sam Houston State led the nation in scoring last year. The cliche goes, something's got to give, but it's got to start for Sam Houston with an outstanding quarterback. They've got fantastic playmakers there, but an offense is only as good as this quarterback when you're having this type of success. And fortunately for the Bobcats, Jeremiah Briscoe's one of the best in the country, one of the best to ever do it on the FCS level. The ability to scan the whole field, grow through his progressions, and get the ball in stride to his receivers so they can make plays, makes him a special quarterback with NFL talent. And last week, he added this dimension to his repertoire, the ability to run. When he can run the football as well as throw the football, this offense becomes even more potent. Jeremiah Briscoe, the man getting it done. His coaches believe that he has the stuff of NFL quarterbacks, and Coach Keeler should know, but look at those numbers. 57 touchdowns last year, Walter Payton Award winner, and uh, he's going to explode, they think, again this year for that offense. Now, on the other side of the football, Prairie View a and and Coach Willie Simmons, and he knows a little bit about offense, too, but this year he's turning the reins over to a new quarterback to lead a dynamic attack. It's the highly anticipated debut of Lavelle McCullough highly recruited junior college transfer. This is an offense that's quarterback friendly. If he can come in and have any type of success accurately throwing the football, they can do some damage. And this can become a track meet between Sam Houston and Prairie View A&M. And it very well could be. These teams like to put it in the air. They like to keep the pressure on offensively. They like to score points. So as T.O. would say, get your popcorn ready and don't leave the room, folks, because you might miss two or three scores if you do. And there he is, Casey Keeler, head football coach at Sam Houston. Knows a thing or two about winning. We'll get a lot more into that. He's in his fourth campaign here. Keeler, a lot of people know that name from the tremendous success he had at the University of Delaware, winning a national championship, and also know some about quarterbacks. Quarterback Joe Flacco played for Coach Casey Keeler while at Delaware. And, of course, he knows a little bit about potential of quarterbacks, NFL quarterbacks, as you talked about, with Joe Flacco, and he thinks he has one in Jeremiah Briscoe. And kicking off, Prairie View won the toss, but they defer, and they're going to kick it off. And we are underway. High end over end kick, but it's short. It bounces. And boy, loose ball down there. And luckily for Sam Houston State, they recover and they'll take over kind of deep in their own territory. Ball being marked at the 14 yard line where the Bearcats will take over. And there's Willie Simmons liking the results of that opening kickoff. Third season at Prairie View AM. Talk about a fast rising young coach and prospect, Willie Simmons. This is his very first head coaching job. And there's the man. We talked about him earlier, Jeremiah Briscoe. He's got good size. He's lost 15 pounds, adding speed to the repertoire. And on first down. Quick screen out to the near side. And that picks up three yards as he hits Corey Compton caught two passes for 20 yards in last week's win over Richmond to start the season. Yeah, that, so was, be, that was great defense on that bubble screen, but did you notice how quickly Briscoe got rid of that football? Very hard to sack a quarterback that makes quick decisions. They say he is a gunslinger. Comes near side, and though he broke on that ball and almost picked it off from the cornerback position, Reginald Stubblefield could have had six. Or maybe it was Jalen Harris, number 23, the cornerback, making a play on that ball and almost picking it off. 
So set that, set up third down. Trying to confuse the quarterback with the different looks at the line of scrimmage. Nobody in the three-point stance on the defensive line for Prairie View A&M. Here, here comes the blitz, but we have flags down. We had a little movement before the snap. It is against Sam Houston State. They're moving a little bit early. Prairie View came out with a very exotic front. Nobody quite getting in a three-point stance. They've got linebackers in there now to bring some pressure up the middle. Jalen Coleman, number 22, is a linebacker. He's going to act as a defensive lineman on the rush. This Bearcat offense likes to be a quick strike offense. Throwing downfield and incomplete. Jeremiah Briscoe was looking for Nathan Stewart. We do have another flag on the play, and now we have another one coming in late. So let's see how they sort this one out. The referee in this one is Eddie Kelly, and a couple of Panther players are pointing towards the Sam Houston side. There are two fouls on Personal foul. Hands to the face, number 10 on the defense. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five on the defense. Automatic, first down. Akeem Barton on the defense, illegal hands to the face, and then they compound matters by an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And, and the part that gets me, the second foul on Arthur Lockett, number five, you make a good play, there's no need for that. You guys came in and had a potential for a three and out, and, and you're, you're talking to guy. Act like you expect to have success all the time. That's a mental error. The one on Akeem Barton, understand hands to the face, that's going to happen on defensive linemen. But the fact that you got the taunting penalty, very disappointing call. Going deep down the far side and creating some separation that time is Nathan Stewart on the far side for a big gain down at the 21 yard line he's forced out of bounds 36 yards on that pickup and here come the Bearcats St Stewart a freshman All-American last season he's the guy that can really stretch the defense you see that 19 yards per catch he can fly slinging it to the near side this one complete to Davion Davis and Davis gets pushed out of bounds at the 12 yard line this team scored 89 touchdowns last year 54 of them came in less than two minutes and that, that's why you got to take advantage of it. Third down, you get off the field, that taunting penalty, a good team is going to make you pay. And right now, Sam Houston State is making them pay for that mental error with Jer a taunting penalty. Jeremiah Briscoe, known as a gunslinger, if he does have a weakness, if you will, uh, don't worry, he throws himself out of it, according to his coaches. Coming near side, Davion Davis breaks a tackle, goes in for the touchdown. Well, this one took him about 225, but they score. 12 yards on the play and the touchdown and Sam Houston goes up top 6-0. If you're going to stop Sam Houston, you have to have the ability to make open field tackles. And you see the quick release, get the ball out to Davis in one-on-one -on -one versus Harris. These receivers are explosive for Sam Houston State. Very difficult to bring down. They made them pay. I said 235, 135, so they keep up. <laughs> so they, they do it a little bit quicker. My math is off a little bit. I didn't go to Howard like my partner here. Anyway, Trey Honstein will attempt the extra point. With the help of that penalty, 86 yards in just a minute 35. And the extra point is through. And just like that, taking advantage of a couple key penalties on third down. The Bearcats of Sam Houston State go in. Davion Davis on the catch and run. We'll be back. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. The Bearcats of Sam State leading it seven to nothing. They take a minute 35 to go 80 yards. Of course, the key, a couple of Prairie View would have had them stopped at three and out. 
face mask or illegal contact to the face and an unsportsmanlike penalty, move the ball, wait the field, and Sam Houston takes it. And because of those numbers you see there on your screen, you, you can't make those type of mental errors on defense. You've got to play your A game, tackle in the open field, lessen the number of plays that this offense gets. Don't allow them to extend the drive by the penalty. And Sam Houston State made them pay. Joshua Simmons feels that one two yards deep in his end zone, and he is smacked down hard right at the 17, call it the 18-yard line. Nice special teams coverage that time. Keep him from the 20, and Prairie View A&M will take over Derek Robertson on the special teams tackle on the kickoff. Lavelle McCullers transfer out of City College of San Francisco. Took his lumps, according to his coaches, in spring, but rebounded and had a great camp. He's a great athlete, and he'll take over for Trey Green, who graduated with those 21 touchdowns and just three picks last year and 2,600-plus yards passing, so he's got some big shoes to fill. On first down, McCullers, his first pass going deep, and that went overshot as he was looking on the far side to Kadero Hodge, his go-to wide receiver, averaged 16.2 yards a catch last season. People that have to make a difference, for the defense for Sam Houston, which had given up some yards a week ago, Eric Fowler, the transfer from the University of Texas, and wide receiver Cadero Hodge is the best one they have. Anytime they get that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Hodge versus defensive back, they're going to try and force feed the football to Hodge. Bearcats gave up a couple deep ones last week, and now a swing pass on the near side. Plenty of room down the near sideline. It's Stephon McCray, and McCray gets across midfield to the 45-yard line, 35 yards on that catch and run. I think that was a blown coverage by a lot. Take a look at the inside backer. Number one goes too far inside. He's the impact player. Eric Fowler got too close to the line of scrimmage, gave up outside leverage, and allowed Prairie View to have a big play. And McCray carries it straight up the middle for a couple. And he's brought down by Darren Harris, a 6'1", 245-pound senior out of Arlington, Texas. There's some yards that you can gain on this team. A week ago versus Richmond, Richmond had over 600 yards total offense versus the Bobcats. So Prairie View came in here with some confidence, thinking they would be able to move the ball. And the fake to Dewanye Tucker and pass to the near side is complete. And he finds his receiver Hodge once again. And Hodge gets 20 on that one to add to the total. And place it inside the 25 to the 23-yard line and move the sticks. First down. When they saw one-on-one -on -one coverage, they said they would force feed the ball to Kadero Hodge. And that was a fantastic back shoulder throw from McCullers. And a great catch from Hodge. His coaches rave about Kadero Hodge. He can do it all, and now we have a false start penalty. Five-yard penalty, first down. And in the middle of a drive, you can't make those type of penalties on offense as well. The any guards are the freshmen. Freshman mistake, get a little excited about taking on Sam Houston. They're moving the ball a little bit. Calm down and play football, young fella. But must also note, this is the very first game of the year for Prairie View A&M, so Garza is making his first collegiate start against a very good football team. So now first and 15, jet sweep. And it goes to Darius Floyd. And he picked up three on the play, so it'll be second and 12. Coach Willie Simmons, we talked to earlier, said, hey, this is an elite program. We know they're the number three team in the country in FCS, but they play under the same conditions we do. We need to look them straight in the eye, line up, play hard, and do everything right and execute, and it will be a close game throughout. Same number of scholarships, same level of football. You're not playing up a level. He thought this was a measuring stick game for his program. McCullers will keep it. Keeps his feet and got tripped up. Boy, he had a lot of room off the right side. He picked up three more, but he could have had a lot more if not for a shoestring tackle. Man, I thought it was an early decision to leave the pocket. He had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Dewanye Tucker. The scat back lined up against number one for Sam Houston State, their middle linebacker, Fowler, who's more of a run stopper. 
Allow those playmakers to make plays in open space. On third and nine. McCullers under pressure. Got rid of it. Has a man. Does he keep his balance? I think he does. And he goes for the first down to Wanye Tucker. What an effort keeping his balance on the right hand to get across the sticks for the first down. And I said the guy because he was open early. They went back to the exact same play they ran on the prior play. One on one Tucker in the flat. And you saw what Tucker was able to do once he got the ball in his hands. Move the sticks. First and ten from call it the 12 yard line. Handoff coming to the near side. That was Dewanye Tucker once again. And he was stopped for no gain. Nice answer right now by the Panthers. Moving the ball down the field, allowing the clock to keep ticking. Now let's see if they can cap it off with a touchdown or if they're forced to settle for a field goal attempt. On second and 10, McCullers going in zone. Oh, he had a man open and overshot him in the near corner as he looked that time for Joshua Simmons, who had a step or two on his defender. Simmons is a track guy. They just ran the rub route. Everybody runs at the slant. You're going to see a slant by number four on the bottom. He's going to come around. You see Simmons. It's there. You have to be able to make that throw. College football, make that throw. So now big third down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Sam Houston continues to play a heavy dose of man-to-man -man coverage. The teams play man-to-man -man in the red zone. They're probably going to bring pressure from their linebackers. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Blitz on. McCullough trying to get away from it. He does. And he overshoots his guy. He was under some heavy pressure. He was looking for Joshua Simmons on the near side. I think Simmons might have run that in if it was just a little bit more accurate. But he was under heavy pressure. Yeah, but the anticipation wasn't there. Red zone, man to man, they're bringing the blitz. You have to know that, so your clock has to be thinking, 1,001, 1,002, I've got to vacate right away. Crossing route was there, and that was a built-in hot read. And if you just sit tall, now you're going to get hit and deliver that ball. That's a touchdown pass. 29-yard effort this time. Zach Elder. And Zach Elder hits it. Zach Elder, the true freshman, Puts him through and Prairie View gets on the board. It's 7-3 here in the first. <laughs> Willie Simmons probably wanted more, but he'll take the 29-yard field goal by Zach Elder. Prairie View A&M gets on the board on its first possession to trail 7-3 and Elder teeing it up to kick it deep. To Deep. Javin Webb and Jalen Harris, who are Thank back you. at their five-yard line. You saw the opening kickoff of the game, so yeah. when your returner is standing on the 10-yard line, they don't anticipate you're going <laughs> to kick it deep. Well, they got a little fooled <laughs> by that first one, which landed at about the 13 or 14, and they almost yeah. lost it on a turnover with the free ball. This one high end over end. Comes down at the four. And brought down hard. At the 16-yard line is Jalen Harris. And the last drive, a minute, 35 seconds. Big completion there to keep the sticks moving. And then the touchdown from Jeremiah Briscoe to Davion Davis, who shakes the tackle and goes in from 12. And like lightning and like usual, Sam Houston gets on the board. Yeah, we, we, there's going to be a lot of offense in this game. And, Sam Houston started the fireworks early, and Prairie View did a decent job of responding, having to settle for a field goal, but they moved the ball pretty easily down the field. There's a little swing out to Yedidiah Lewis, and Lewis still breaking tackles along the far side before he's finally driven out of bounds close to first down yardage. He was driven out by Will Skinner. He picked up nine. On the play, it'll be second and short. Yeah, and Yeti Lewis is an All-American wide receiver target for Jeremiah Briscoe, and Jalen Coleman's got to be that versatile guy that can pass rush, that can also make open field tackles and coverage for Prairie View. And 
There's a fake and pass downfield looking that time again for Nathan Stewart. And on the safe down for a little play action, second and short, it is incomplete. I really like how Sam Houston, they make you cover all 53 yards, sideline to sideline. And they were not afraid to get the ball to those playmakers in open field. And not only prove you can cover, but you have to prove you can tackle these wide receivers as well. And on third down, that'll be enough for a first down as the give goes to Javin Webb. Jav Javin Webb, however, he picked up three. And that'll move the sticks. They'll run it enough to keep you honest and keep you spread out so you don't load the box against them. A very, very difficult offense to game plan for. Firing down the middle. It is complete. Held on to Yedidiah Lewis. Another first down. They'll mark him at the 43. What did Coach say when he described Briscoe? Gunslinger mentality? This is a gunslinger throw. <laughs> Watch how many purple jerseys are around this football. One, two, three receive, uh, defenders around it, but quarterback with a gunslinger mentality, they take what they want. Briscoe got away with one. Lewis came into this game just four receptions short of being the all-time conference leader. That one, Davion Davis trying to make a juggling act there and pull it in before defenders got close enough. He could not, so it'll set up second and ten. One well, of the few miscues we've seen from Briscoe this evening, short hopping the ball, maybe a little bit too quick as the Bobcats go to an empty backfield. And showing blitz. Here's Prairie View, a nice stiff arm off a tackle on the far side of the field by Nathan Stewart. And let's see if Prairie View might have jumped into the neutral zone that time. Pick up of seven on that completion. Outsides, defense, number 22, five yard penalty, second down. And they're going to take the penalty and negate the Negate the game that time and take the five yards on the offside penalty. And it's now second and five. And big hole up the middle. This is Javin Webb, and Webb gets down inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Give him 24 on that play. I'm sorry, Remus Bulmer, number 34. Dashing up the middle that time, not 24 Webb, 34 Bulmer, who is one of their leading rushers, had 10 carries for 89 yards last week. And he explodes up the middle that time, and we get some more movement. There'll be another flag on the play. Foul start, offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, first down. Sam Spencer. Big right tackle, 6'4", 295 pounder out of Dallas, Texas. You know, teams are going to try and get a jump. It frustrates you so much when a quarterback is sitting clean in the pocket, picking you apart, that you're really starting to see these Prairie View Panther defenders try and anticipate a snap count. This is Bowman getting to the corner, cuts it back up inside, and picks up the penalty yardage and then some. Give him about six. And that'll set up, set up second and nine. And an efficient team does the little things right. And that play there, the tight end, Josh Moore, did a fantastic job of sealing that edge for the running game. This is a finely coached offensive machine from Sam Houston State. They make the tough things look easy. And again, second man through. But the fake, the jet sweep is Remus Bulmer. And Bulmer picks up three more off the right side. He's brought down by Arthur Lockett. So a key third down here, especially for the Prairie View defense. They want to try to get another stop and perhaps force a field goal right here. Coach Casey Keeler not so comfortable beyond 40 yards with his special teams field goal unit. We'll see how it plays out here. Third down. Briscoe going deep. 
And good coverage in the end zone. As he looked for Corey Compton, who was well covered. By old man Jalen. <laughs> old man Jalen Harris. Very interesting story about Harris that we'll tell you about. Former minor league baseball player. Converted to a football player, but it's not that simple. Good coverage and forces Sam Houston to go for a field goal. Trey Honstein. Honstein will attempt this one from 43 yards. He was one of one from that distance. It is up and has way more than enough leg. It is right through. And Sam Houston State scores again on its second possession to go up by seven. Saints Vikings then Chargers Broncos Monday on ESPN. Trey Honstein about to kick it deep. Joshua Simmons and Arthur Lockett. This is a short one. Actually, Dewanye Tucker takes that one. We have a flag down on the play at about the 22. We'll see how they sort this one out. Dewanye Tucker, we were told, is going to handle most of the punt return duties as well. Preliminary indication that it's going to be a hold against Prairie View A&M. Such a bang bang play. I'm a little surprised. Normally you don't see a hold on a kickoff return like that. There's no foul for blocking in the back. First time. Okay. Not a hold. Not yeah. a blocking in the back. back. Nothing. Yeah. I, it was, I mean, you know, but that was a collision. Short kickoffs mm -hmm. produce collisions a lot of times. So right. that was one of those cases there where we probably talked about it. Got the call right, but let him play on the field. Good ball game here. 10 3. Football's flying all over the field. Let's see if Ravel McCullough settles down, can settle down now in his second series as a starting collegiate quarterback. Quick swing out of the backfield to Stefan McCray. And McCray will pick up about three or on the play, maybe four. We'll give him the spot and call it four. And that works. McCray, the senior transfer from South Florida, but you get the ball to him, that's four yards, that's completion, it wears down the defense. And Houston, they don't complain when they pick up four yards on a little swing pass. That's how you keep the defense on their heels. Total yards, we're already piling them up, piling them up rather, 122 to 79. This time, trying to get the corner is Stephon McCray, and he does for another three, so it'll be third and a manageable three for the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. And again, they talk about this high-powered offense that they're facing, but they told us when we talked to them, the coaches, hey, we practice with a high-powered offense every day, so that shouldn't scare us too much. Yeah, they thought they could handle the tempo. They said the defense was built for speed, not size. And right now we're seeing Prairie View move the ball efficiently to see if they can convert on third down. Joshua Simmons in motion, creating three receivers to the far side, and he's got it, and some room across the 40. He's got blazing speed, and a touchdown-saving tackle potentially that time pushes him out of bounds as he crosses midfield. Simmons is on the track team at Prairie View A&M, and you saw him kick into a fifth gear. Touchdown-saving tackle. And that gives it time, and Stephon McRae Good yardage that time on first down off the right side. And he picks up close to nine on the play that'll set up second and short. Boy, he turned it into another gear that time along the far side. I thought he was going, but a nice saving tackle to push him out of bounds. And McCray comes to the sideline. Both coaches have their foot on the accelerator pedal. Tough night to play defense in this stadium. McCullough looking deep. Underthrown just a little bit. Back there defending on the play was Darius Mouton. The transfer from UNLV. Pretty good coverage. And that's one there where I think Hodge has to come back. He comes back with the ball. 
This is pass interference. But when you start drifting, you allow the defensive back to have the inside leverage. And were you the kind of quarterback that thought second and one was kind of like a free play to take a shot like that? Oh, absolutely. Right now, you know they're in four down territory. Where'd you say Darius Mouton transferred from? UNLV. Who, UNLV. Beat, who beat them last week? Howard University. Okay. Oh. And on third down, Jalen Morton came in at quarterback for a special run type play, and he lost his footing, and he'll end up losing a couple yards on that play. So it'll set up fourth down and close to five. Oh, wow. And if he doesn't lose any yard, if he gets back in the line of scrimmage, then I think you go for it on fourth and one. But in this case here, Jalen Morton. You think it, you think it tip off the defense a little I bit do. that you're going to do Absolutely. something special when you when you, when you change in, the quarterback. Yeah, you bring in your 240 pound quarterback who likes to run it a little bit. Owen Houlihan should strike this from about his 41. And now we have a timeout on the field. The left game offense number 82 five yard penalty. If they, if they were thinking about doing something special, probably not now, and Willie Simmons is not happy about that at all. Very upset, and he's over there getting on the line. They say it's on Morton. Normally when you see a coach animated, the play was there. They had the blocking scheme and the look that they wanted, but they just did not execute. It's Davion Davis back deep. We have another flag on the play, and this one lands and will roll inside the 10 yard line. Very nice bounce on that one, but we'll see how they sort out this flag, which I see down on the side of the field at about the 46 yard line. It's a 45 yard punt. Illegal formation. High yard penalty. Re-kick. So off the illegal formation and Willie Simmons again like hey fellas what's going on and how do you call that an illegal formation looks like he's talking to a side judge looking for an explanation but his special team is going to have to kick it again and yet Lewis now back deep to receive six penalties so far in the game and we're not done with the first quarter yet against Prairie View a &M. Owen Houlihan. Strikes this one from a 31 high and short. Thank you. And that's that penalty again costly because of the shank punt this time. It's going to be marked out of bounds after only a 12 yard net gain at the 46 yard line of Sam Houston State. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN college football game live at home or on the go. Get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. What a difference. That's 35 yards in field position. Yes. In a game like this with these two offenses, you know that Sam Houston's going to make them pay, and they're going to come out attacking. And here's the give and plenty of room on the far side of the field to Corey Avery. First team all conference running back last year and Avery scampering for 23 move the sticks down to the 31 yard line and here come the Bearcats once again on offense. Level screen near side. And fighting for extra yardage is Yedidiah Lewis. And Lewis picks up six on the play. Jalen Harris finally corralled him and threw him out of bounds. It'll be second and four. And that's what the system does. The moment you get grounded and say, okay, I'm going to start playing against the run. They're going to try and pound the football. Well, then they just throw a wide receiver bubble screen, pick up some more positive yards. Give and trying to bounce it back outside. That time is Avery. And Avery, who led the conference with 10 rushing touchdowns last season, picks up a couple, and it'll be third and a manageable two. 
Third and one, third and two win. The Sam Houston defense made that stop to slow down Prairie View. Time to see if the Panthers defense can make the stop now. And whistled on the field. For the snap, timeout. Prairie View, first charge, 30 second timeout. Prairie View coaches probably saw something they didn't like very much, so they call a timeout, try to regroup, and they've got a key third down, maybe even four down territory here. Although we did see a nice effort in the field goal team, Hanstein. So obviously comfortable beyond 40 yards on a night like tonight here at Prairie View and Panther Stadium. And it would really, really be an important third down stop here for the Panther defense against this juggernaut of an offense. And of course, under Willie Simmons, this team knows a little bit about offense. It knows a little bit about winning. 15 and three in SWAC play. And one of the brighter young coaches in all of college football, Willie Simmons. Third and short. Get a big hole inside the 10 yard line is Javin Webb. As Webb blasted right up the middle. Big yardage, he picked up 16. It'll be first and goal to go for Jeremiah Briscoe and the Bearcats offense. And great job by the guys up front, particularly Tristan Witt, the center, number 68. Just really doing a good job of moving the pile, gaping holes in the middle of that defense. Coming down to the final seconds here in the first quarter, we have we have had plenty of excitement. Webb again. Webb scores touchdown. And Sam Houston, a perfect three for three. Three possessions, three scores, and now they go up 16-3 with three seconds to go in the first. Yeah, and great play calling by Tim Cramsey, the offensive coordinator. He realized that Prairie was going small. A bunch of linebackers trying to play defensive line. Just Slide protection, tell your running backs to look for the cutback wing. Having a five play, 54 yard march. And Hanstein puts the extra point up and through, and that one took only a minute 53. So make it a 17 3 score. With three seconds to go here in the first, and how important now is this next possession for Prairie View down by a couple of scores? They're all important. Good yeah. ball game. From the opening kickoff, when you're playing an offense like Sam Houston, you, you know you're in a track meet. You've got to score. When they score, you have to score. They fell short their last drive. Now it's important that they score, and almost important that they score a touchdown. You see Keeler, of course, has won everywhere he's been in his fourth season here. 35th win last week in three years as Hanstein will tee up the kickoff. And they got a good one. I and mean, how perfect was that? You go from the success Willie Fritz had right. here at Sam Houston State to all of a sudden Casey Keeler is available to be a coach. You saw the stats. Winning his coach in postseason history, taking over a program that has had so much recent success. And they think they're knocking on the door of a national championship at Sam Houston State. Joshua Simmons taking the kickoff about a yard deep in his own end zone and brought it out short of the 15 yard line and that'll end the first quarter. Sam Houston State on fire. That is in. Leading seven yards of one here on ESPNU. Second quarter about to get underway. Sam Houston State scoring on all three of its offensive possessions, leading 7-13-3. Lavelle McCullers trying to come out and lead Prairie View back into it. And picking up a couple yards on that run is Caleb Broach. Caleb Broach, a 5'9", 205-pound sophomore. And McCullers, 5'9", 85 yards so far. 
ask was it important that they score. I mean, it's huge because right now, I just don't like the body language you see from Prairie View. They've been a little bit outplayed on special teams. Defense hasn't stopped them yet. Right now, they're playing like a team that's really on the ropes. Sam Houston jumping out to an early 14-point lead. Game this time and tripped up. Coming off the right side is Broach once again for two more. We talked to uh, Clayton Carlin, the defensive coordinator for Sam Houston State, and he said, hey, with all the yards we gave up last week, especially on some deep passes, wouldn't be surprised at all if they tested us deep. They have. They've been unsuccessful. Yeah, I mean, I keep throwing it, though, because I'm afraid of you. We're not going to allow you running the football. And this is a team that likes to throw it. Get your quarterback some confidence. Your best football players, Cadero Hodge, get him the football. Third and six. Approach to the left of his quarterback. There's a blitz. And the blitz comes and gets to it. Down goes McCullers. And blitzing coming through almost untouched is Hunter Brown, a reserve linebacker. They brought the linebacker and the corner. Everything coming from the right side. You'll see Brown. You also saw the cornerback coming into the picture on the cat blitz. He just didn't see it at all. Two guys coming hot, and McCullers had no idea. Yeti Lewis is at the 45-yard line of Prairie View so you think unless you get a booming punt Sam Houston State's going to have excellent field position once again. High punt by nice. Houlihan drives him back across midfield and Yeti Lewis still on his feet still on his feet spinning away from tackles and finally a host of purple shirts bring him down at the 47 yard line. Sam Houston State in position to add to their 17 free lead. Thanks in part to a good defensive effort on that last drive and the sack off the blitz. We are the SWAC. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers. That motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. I am not. Jeremiah Briscoe and company starting the second quarter, fourth possession of the game. They've scored every time they've had the ball on offense so far. Off the play fake, steps up in the pocket, guns it downfield, wide open receiver. That's Yeti Lewis, and Yeti Lewis, big yardage inside the 25, forced out of bounds at the 23. The worst fear for Prairie View was that Sam Houston State was going to go match protection, keep an extra blocker in the backfield. In this case, it was a tight end, and allow Yeti Lewis and those three wide receivers to do damage downfield. You see at the end of this run, Yeti Lewis has been playing with a lot of heart. Came down a little gingerly on that leg. Let's hope it's nothing serious. On the quick slant to the far side. And he hits Davion Davis that time. And they're looking at Lewis over on the sideline there. Lewis needed four receptions to become the all-time Southland Conference leader in receptions coming into this game. Seems to be just trying to walk it off over there. Seven yard gain on first down on the quick slant. Now going into a wide open touchdown. He finds his tight end Josh Moore and in no time flat they have added to the lead once again on the 16 yard scoring play. A little timeout well, call on the play. And they'll do receive it downfield. Offense, number 88. Five yard penalty. Second down. So I I did not see a flag or anything like that, but the other tight end, Rogan Henderson, was ineligible to downfield. They take a look, yeah. He was covered up. 
And that's a mental error on the wide receiver. The wide receiver just has to get off the line behind him. So take a touchdown off the board. And make it second and eight. Heavy pressure. Gets rid of it. Intercepted. Big turnover that time for Prairie View as they get the big pick off the penalty. Anthony Parker comes away with the interception. And there is a flag, I believe. Two flags. Two flags on the opposite side of the field. And we'll see how they sort that out. And they were definitely after the interception. So I think there'll be a change of possession. It's just a matter of this was unsportsmanlike. When you get three flags. First and five. First and five. Unnecessary rush on the intercepting team, number 24. Then it will be half the distance to the goal. First down, Brady. Well, they got pressure on him, and he scrambled, just threw it up for grabs. It was a nice job of the interception. Oh, look at that. Stubble field. Stubble field trying to catch somebody standing around the pile. And that's just that's just poor discipline. Twice we've seen it. And what are they gonna learn? They're calling it tight down on the field, and there's no place for cheap shots in football anymore. Today's college football landscape. You know, if you get caught with that cheap shot, they can eject you and also stop you from playing the next week. What a big turnover. They are about to be down. 23 to 3 or at least 24 after the extra point penalty wipes out a touchdown they get a big turnover and have that undisciplined error on behalf of one of the defensive backs to push them back but they did get the turnover so McCullers and company starting on offense and the swing had an open receiver as well as he was looking for Joshua Simmons who had plenty of room to run if he had caught that one. with Simmons speed which we saw on display earlier in this contest that would have been a huge play and you've got to make that throw. That's just a five-yard completion, moving the pocket a little bit. He's made that throw on many occasions, I'm sure. But maybe he's playing a little bit nervous right now in his first start. Wanting desperately to get something going, trailing by 14 against the powerful offense of the Bearcats of Sam Houston State. And McCullers under some heavy pressure and just throws it away. Incomplete as he was looking in the direction of Darius Floyd downfield. So it'll be third and long, third and ten. And I think right now the speed of the game is affecting McCullough. I mean, you know, normally everybody knows when you get pressure right away on a little play action, move the pocket, you throw for your check down in front of you. He's trying to make that second level throw, trying to do too much. He has to breathe and slow down and let the game come to him until he gets a little bit more comfortable with the speed that he's facing right now from Sam Houston State. McCullers buying some time. Now he'll get outside and he'll stay on his feet and get out to the 35-yard line. Big run on third down by the quarterback. Lavelle McCullers picks up 21 yards and move the chains first down. A big first down indeed for Prairie View a and It's a good one. You take it. But when you play quarterback, your job is get the ball to wide receivers, distribute the football. And he had a crossing receiver right in front of him that would have run for more than the first down, but he elected to take it himself and run the football. Blitz is on, gets a bubble screen to the near side. Good nice. blocking in front. Done. Across midfield, we do have a flag on the play. And going all the way down inside the 35-yard line is Cadero Hodge. And the preliminary indication will be holding against the Panther offense. We'll see how they sort it all out. Call wide receiver blocking on the edge, probably. I thought the timing was perfect. Holding. Offense, number 74. 10 yard penalty. First down. Uh, that's a tough one. I, I, I didn't see a wide receiver screen on the inside. I thought they did a good job, and I don't, I'm looking for, a, uh, for I'm looking for a 74. But and actually, maybe 72. they were talking about 72. Corbin Finlayson. I thought the I, th I thought the linebacker ran himself inside out, but yeah, 
And then you told on yourself, but that I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Finlay's in the center. Thought it was an unnecessary hold, but nevertheless, it was a hold. Eighth penalty against the Panthers of Prairie View A&M in this one. 75 yards. And wipes out a nice gain on first down, and now we have a timeout on the field. Prairie View will come over and talk Time it out. over. Prairie View. Second charge. And Coach Willie Simmons, you might have heard him on microphone saying that's not holding. He is still upset about that previous call against Finn Lacey. He's going to talk things over with his offense, but one score gets him right back in, and they could really use a touchdown here on this drive in a second, but when you hurt yourself with penalties like that, it makes it that much more difficult. And, and, and let, let's give you a little football one-on-one. -on -one. So you know what causes penalties a lot? Speed. <laughs> if I'm faster than you and I beat you to the spot, you're not used to it, you tend to hold on. You know, and what also wins football game is power. And Sam Houston State's done a good job of combining the speed with the power. They establish control of the line of scrimmage, run the football, and right now it's just the speed of Sam Houston, I think, that's given Prairie View a number of problems. They're not they're in positions where they're not used to seeing it, and it's getting to them quick, and that's why the play's been a little sloppy. That, along with the fact that this is the very first game of the year for Prairie View A&M, and Sam Houston's playing game number two. So now first and 16 for McCullers and his offense after the penalty. And cutting back a little bit, taking it up the middle out across the 30 is Stefan McRae to pick up three. And tougher. Prayer of you to run the football so far tonight. But I do think that if you want to have success versus Bobcat, you have to run the football. No bubble screen this time once again. Face they mask. try to set it up. And pick up about the four face more mask. against Kadero High. Wow. They went back to that same wide receiver screen. Getting the ball to Hodge, their best athlete. And I thought it could have been called for a face mask on the inside. We have an entry on the field, Santiago Montoya, number 41. He is a uh, backup will linebacker, a sophomore out of Klein, Texas, Collins High School. And they'll check him out on the field. Looks like they're looking at the left lower leg. And he needs a little help getting off the field. So that'll set up a third down and nine and a timeout because that injury will be given to Sam Houston State or they take a timeout. And talk things over on the sideline. Big third down play for Prairie View. Again, we talked about it. They shot themselves in the foot a lot with unnecessary penalties so far in the first half of this game. For this offense, third and nine, and throwing the ball out, it should be makeable. But the fact is they're starting to drive a little bit longer because of the holding penalty that right now they find themselves trying to overcome. I think the play calls and the play selection by Coach Simmons has been there. We've seen guys wide open. We've seen them throw with the misdirection, but the execution has not been up to par. And as this game goes on, you would think they would get a little bit more sharper, get used to game speed. So it'll be third down and nine. The ball spotted between the 36 and 37 yard line. Spread them out. You've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup at the bottom of your screen with Hodge. Sam Houston showing a little blitz bluff that time. We'll see if they keep that call on. On third and long. They are blitzing. Coming up the middle. And a bubble screen attempted on the far side. McCullers was under great pressure. He did hit Darius Floyd. But for not much at all. Maybe a yard. Adrian Contreras laid the lumber to him. 
And they have those safeties in there buzzing, looking for anything short. Not able to fool anybody. And that's great recognition by Contreras coming up from that strong safety position. Owen Houlihan will strike this from about his 26 yard line as Prairie View fails. Thanks in large part to key penalty. And Houlihan shanks another one. And that one goes out of bounds. We'll see where they'll spot it. Sam Houston State will take over, leading by 14 here in the second. I thought you were choosing the flute. Everyone's doing flute. Buick now has an SUV for that. Where's your butter? Ooh. Hey, Mom, it's a tuba. Buick Enclave, one of three luxury SUVs. At 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, and is also streaming live on the ESPN app. And you got to talk fast with this offense going because they just run plays. Quick hitter on the far side. We got flags down as he hits Davion Davis. Does Jeremiah Briscoe. Outside. Defense number five. High goal penalty. First down. Arthur Lockett offside. And they've been busy. The officials have been busy from those officials. Another self inflicted error. And one thing you cannot do, you can't make these type of mistakes versus the Bearcats. Let me correct myself. I'm a man. I was called him Bobcats a couple times. Mental error on my part. I know they're the Bearcats. We're going to apologize. And they're the number three team in the country. I'm going to call you by your rightful name, Bearcats. <laughs> a quick hitter on the near side. They find Davion Davis once again, who's been quite busy in this one. And we got more flags down. This time, every official on the field seems to throw a flag. And we'll see how they sort this one out. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 46 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. This is number 46 first, unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, you know, you have to want to win the game. Right now, they're playing selfish football. Play's been made, and he's coming. Wham! Taking a cheap shot on him. There's no place for that. That should be an ejection. <laughs> that should be an ejection. I know they call him on the person, and you get two warnings, but. There's no place for that. Somebody's going to get hurt. That's dangerous. That's cheap football. Shafiq Nellums on that penalty. And the run off the near side is stopped for a loss of about a yard on the play. So as we approach the seven and a half minute mark in the first and, half. And I'm, I'm hot right now. And there's no place for that in college football. Absolutely not. I mean, the game is dangerous enough play is clearly over he's walking and you're going to do that I don't know why I don't know why you'd lose your head like that and, and retaliation the second guy it's is selfish always football. the one caught but it's selfish football it's not about the team anymore it's about you getting a little payback and the moment you get a little payback your team has to suffer quick slant pattern is complete to Tyler Scott for six yards by Jeremiah Briscoe so it'll set up third down and five from the 26 yard line of Prairie View. This going company had the uh, last drive ended by a turnover, the interception. After a touchdown was wiped out by a penalty. And throwing down the middle, and that one deflected and almost intercepted in the secondary. He was looking for Davion Davis and Jalen Harris, I believe, is the one who almost came up with it off the deflection. No, maybe not. Maybe it was Will Skinner, number 33, who almost came up with it. So this will be an interesting call here on fourth down. Will they go for the field goal? It looks like the Briscoe and the offense staying on the field. Fourth down and five. If you're going to start hitting my players after the whistle and stuff like that, it's personal. They're going to keep their foot on the gas pedal. Fourth and short, they're going to try and go for it. Not surprised. 
Blitz is on, protected well, and complete on the near side. And pulled down just outside the 10-yard line as Davion Davis moved the chains. And Sam Houston State, after picking up 16, is knocking on the door once again. And great play call. They anticipated getting man-to-man -man coverage. Kept in a tight end to block and allowed their playmakers to get open deep down the field. Watch 84, that tight end. In that formation, they like to use him to seal that edge. Up the middle is Corey Avery. And Avery gets inside the five to the four before Jalen Williams brought him down. Did you see the kickout block by 84, Josh Moore? Watch him seal the edge. Left side of your screen, in man line of scrimmage, inside out. That's the running lane right there. Can't run around contact when you're trying to stop the run. You got to get physical down there. We're seeing prayer if you run around would be blockers. Risco under center. And give off the near side. Javin Webb. And Webb gets down inside the five to about the three. Give him two on the play. Second and go. Yeah, they're going to get physical with him. You take your quarterback, you put him under center and say, okay, you guys want to run around contact? Then we're going to give you contact. And they're going with their heavy lineup. Two tight ends in the game. Third down and two. Throwing end zone and incomplete. Boy, he gunned that one. That one whistled by his intended receiver, Nathan Stewart. So it'll be fourth down and two from about the three. <laughs> and you and, know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're going to go for it once again. Yeah. Getting a little personal, a little chippy down there. Casey Dealer. They use play action to buy him some time. He'll run straight up the middle and push the pile into the end zone for the touchdown. Javin Webb and Sam Houston State piling it on a little bit, up 23 to 3 now, pending the extra point. We're going to see just power football. They sneak the right guard around. That's Tyler Tesno does a good job coming around, sealing the edge. Tesno, 6'4", 340 pound. Right guard showing nice mobility to lead Webb into the end zone. Nine play, 54 yard march and a whopping 356. As Hanstein puts the extra point up and through. Sam Houston staying in control, 435 to go in the hand. Bearcats of Sam Houston State leading Prairie View here at Prairie View Stadium in Prairie View, Texas on a beautiful night for football. 24-3, 4.35 to go in the first half. Along with Jay Walker, I'm Eric Clemens. Thanking you for being with us here on ESPN, Thursday night's edition of College Football. Trey Hornstein will kick this one deep, and it's coming to the near side and field it on the near side by Darius Floyd, and Floyd staying on the near side and staying on his feet, picking his way, and then we have another flag down at the 27-yard line where he was forced out of bounds. And we also have an injured Bearcat down on the near sideline at about the 20 out of bounds. Nice footwork that time by Darius Floyd, tiptoeing along the near side, staying in bounds. And that's Justin Gill. First and a foul, face mask. Face mask against the uh, kicking team. And we have a timeout on the field to attend to the injury. We'll be back more of the second quarter action in just a few.
king of the rapids. I'll get you next time. And we're back. Trying to break some tackles and slam down. And Kawanye Tucker after a pickup of two. We do have flags on the play. Looks like something you might see in the pro wrestling. As Kawanye fighting for more yards, gets picked up in the air. And now having some trouble with the microphone of referee Eddie Kelly, but it is a personal foul penalty against Sam Houston State. So another 15 yards. Derek Robertson, I believe, was the culprit on that play, picking up and slamming the defender or the uh, running back down to the turn. It's chippy down there, but that's what you can't afford. As well as Sam Houston's played this first half and dominated, if Prairie View somehow can score a touchdown, and get the extra point, make it just a two score game at halftime. And they do get the ball to start the second half. Things can get interesting very quickly here in Prairie View. And on the keeper, McCullers bounces it outside and gets first down yardage down to the 31 yard line. Give him 11 that time before Adrian Contreras brought him down. So now Prairie View making something happen here on this drive. Yeah, just call his own number, pulls the ball late, catches the end. Derek Roberson, who you've been talking about a couple times, keep it in the backfield. A fumbled snap. And Kiwanye Tucker showing some good instincts that time, scooping it up, trying to make something out of it, but they'll end up losing three. This one of those you can't have that. Snap was a little bit low, but you have to make that. One-on-one -on -one up top with Hodge. Tucker off the far side. Plenty of room. Cuts it back. Great job by Tucker, the scat back. 5'7", 165 pound sophomore from Terrell, Texas. When you got guys like this, look at the safety angle. Over pursues to the right, one cut and a shift. He makes three defenders miss as he goes into the end zone. Prairie View, an opportunity to make this 14 point lead if they make the extra point. A little trouble getting some personnel in on the special teams after the 34 yard run. The extra point is up and good. Four plays, 58 yards, a minute 49. And Prairie View suddenly makes it interesting with 2.46 to go here in the first half, down by two scores, as you talked about earlier. and stayed a little bit too much time the way they put the pedal to the metal on offense my thoughts exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know two minutes and 45 seconds that's you're down 21 plays for them you're down 21 though you can't tell yeah. your guy to hold up and not to no, go in the no, end zone you, you score you don't take it for granted there and now you just ask your special teams and your defense to make a play oh no another Kick out of kick off, kicked out of bounds. Oh, you don't do that with a dangerous offense. And you're going to give them great oh. field position. They just, they're beating themselves a lot. They're, they're not giving themselves a chance to win this ball game. How about that? Kicking the ball out of bounds against an offense like this. When you're trying to just go to the half down by 14. Just a few too many mental errors for any coach but especially for coach Willie Simmons well, I hope the band is warmed up the marching storm ready to entertain the home folks here at Prairie View Stadium can we widen that shot I want everybody to see how much bling they got brass 
I don't know if I've seen that many tubas or sousaphones, as they're correctly called, on a particular band. I counted walking in here over 20. Wow. So that's just their. They are a storm. There's a lot of them. <laughs> that's, that's just that section. I'm checking about halftime now. Big doesn't always mean better. But that's just the tuba section. And then they got the Black Foxes. You like that name? The Black Foxes. The dance team. But right now, they got to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> got to weather this storm from Jerry the Bearcats. Offense and Walter Payton Award winner from 2016, Jeremiah Briscoe. And give that time going right off right guard to Corey Avery, who picks up four. Uh, and here's how you know this is a confident bunch. Most teams, 240, four and a half, we're throwing the ball. 240 is plenty of time for this offense. They're willing to establish the run and continue to pound the football. Give Avery five on first down. On second and five, here's Briscoe. Plenty of time. Throws near side and has his tight end, Josh Moore. And Moore is hit a little short of the first down. Give him a pickup of three. So it'll be third and two. And again, this is a high tempo, up tempo offense. This two minute drill, if you will, they run this pretty much all game. Yeah, but the one thing they're used to doing is getting a lot of the look, their pre snap look, and then adjusting. In a hurry up situation, they can't get that long, delayed look they're used to getting. So they've got to kind of go with the play they call from the sideline and run it. Won't see them checking out a lot. And they give, and first down yardage picked up that time off the left side. Javin Webb. And they'll move the change. He picked up five. Ball spotted at the 47-yard line. And the drive continues. See, now that they'll settle down with the first down, and they'll see what the look is. It would be surprised if they change the play, go to fake snap count. And that one stacked up. Davion Davis, who's been very busy this evening. Catching quick passes. This is a confident bunch. They've got three timeouts with a minute and 15. They haven't even thought about using one of them. Briscoe deep downfield and has his man. He hits Nathan Stewart that time, who made sure he held on to it. 23 yards inside the 30 to the 27 yard line, spotted at the 28. And they'll move the change once again with inside a minute to go. Briscoe far side, and that one caught, touchdown. They made it look way too easy that time. Davion Davis. It was almost as if they didn't want to leave enough time for Prairie View to score on the clock. Took their time, and Jeremiah Briscoe delivered a strike. Just a nice route combination. This is zip. He's called zip. Three verticals. They run of them. Runs across the formation. The other one in the scene. Safety not able to get there in time. And Davion Davis goes into the end zone easily. And the extra point yes. off the left upright, no good. So a six play, 65 yard drive takes 159. So it is 30 to 10 after the missed extra point. One more look at the scoring play. Yeah, this is just take you what you want. Strong arm quarterback zings it into the soft spot of the crease. And you know what a quarterback does? They, they know when they got you. Give me the fist pump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boom. And that would be their third scoring march of the night in less than two minutes. First scoring drive took a minute 35 to go 86 yards. And then a seven yard TD run by Webb capped a 153 drive, and that one just completed Briscoe to Davion Davis in a minute 59. So I hope you didn't go away to make popcorn because you missed another one. Yeah, and I'd be very careful on this kickoff. Kick it away from number three. Joshua Simmons, he's proven he could be the fastest guy on the field. And I believe Sam Houston knows that. So I wouldn't doubt they kick it to number three deep. Arius Floyd, a nice return 
out up to the 34 yard line. Now our hearts go out to the thousands of people affected by this catastrophic disaster in Texas, Hurricane Harvey. We all know it's a challenging and emotional time and the American Red Cross is working round the clock to get help to where it's needed most. Donate today by going to redcross.org slash ESPN and uh, Prairie View, A&M is doing a lot. They've uh, rewarded first responders, police, fire, and military, and Texas uh, teachers with ID, uh, free entrance into their games, all elementary, middle school, high school students with ID, parents of students, just $10 admissions. Prairie View doing its part to help the relief effort. A nice run on the near side as we just have over approaching the 32nd mark as the clock was stopped. Dewanye Tucker with a nice gain on first down, picking up 15. And Prairie View does have a timeout remaining. And now Sam Houston's going to take a timeout because they're trying to get some personnel off the field. Uh, it's a tale of two teams in, in Casey Keeler's ball quad. The offense, they're in control. There's no questions about this offense. You know, they're at 30 points already at halftime. The question's on defense. Something doesn't, something doesn't look right on offense. That will be okay. Something looks right on defense. Timeout. 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 We got to talk about it. But I tell you, good field position for Prairie View. They still have an opportunity to, at the very least, get a field goal effort here. They do, and they need to step on the gas pedal right now. Be a good time to do it. If they can score three points, or seven going to that halftime that builds momentum and now they, they get the ball before, back they get the ball back and speaking of halftime oh. how about a little give me five? Oh yeah we you know i always look forward to it. i've got one that i think all audiences would appreciate okay the fcs postseason events with hbc ties and okay. teams and here's mccullough oh. a big hole up the middle mccullough one man to beat inside the 10. He'll be marked down at the seven yard line with 16 seconds to go. 45 yards on the just simple quarterback run up the middle. Kill it. Spike it. Spike it. Spike it. What's taking you so long? You're going to run a play. McCullough dumps to the near side. Timeout. And they got to call a timeout now as his receiver goes down as he hit Joshua Simmons. Look like Simmons might have a chance to stretch it in there. So now this makes it really interesting. Three seconds. You really almost have to kick it. Well, well that's why you, know, you see it right here. It's a great job by McCullers calling his own number quickly. And then the play after, I want to I fight the ball right now. Don't worry about this. He's three or four yards. They don't help you right now. Time is not your friend. So that's what I was going with the spike giving myself a second and a third down to throw in the end zone and then kick it and kept the timeout. But as you mentioned, now you're basically going to say we're going to score, go for a touchdown, right. or tip the field goal. The field goal it would be from less distance than most extra points. Do you take the points? Because if you go for it and fail, then you lose that momentum. You lose the momentum. Your game. But you know what? It's non-conference. You're at home. It's your home opener. You're in Prairie View Tech, you go for it. You don't, you don't settle for a field goal in this situation, you go for it. And as we talked about, a score would do a whole, whole lot for the yep. confidence of the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. Now, looks like they've put some time back on the clock instead of three seconds at six, and that changes things. We, we, we lost the timeout. Yeah. Yeah, but now you can throw the ball to the end zone in less than six no. seconds. If you're incomplete, you come on and, and I'll, kick I'll, the field goal. Wouldn't chance it. No. Okay. Wouldn't, Looks wouldn't like they're it. gonna. I don't see a field I, goal kicker out there just I, yet. I mean, I agree you go for it, but I don't think I don't think you throw the ball right now. If you can't gain a yard, you don't do it. They're confused too. Look at this. Confusion on the alignment. And Jalen Morton is in at quarterback and now we have whistles all over the field time out what do we say what, what's the personality <laughs> of sam houston when things don't look right on defense with any questions time out offense we can overcome it they've shown it but when, you know that's that's a good coaching right there by keeler saying hey you want to see the formation see what they come out and say okay they were setting up to do this and then they, again, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a novice when it comes to football strategy, so to speak. But they tip their hand a little bit by bringing in the other quarterback. Yes. 
And there comes the timeout. And Morton, who played a bit last season, completing almost 50% of his passes with eight touchdowns and seven interceptions. He's got an NFL arm, according to some of his coaches, but he's got to get some of the mental aspects of the game straightened out. But they are fully confident with him at the range as well, even though he lost the head-to-head -head battle to McCullers for the starting job in Canada. Look at the fans here in Prairie View. Trying to take advantage of home field advantage, fire up their football team. Impressive venue they've had here on display in this part of Texas. McCullers now back into the game. And you got to do something rolling out and quick. You got to run the ball up the middle. You've just been carving them up there. Gain a yard. Look, he fumbled the snap. He runs it in. <laughs> Touchdown. Oh, what a recovery by Lavelle McCullers. And we got ourselves a ball game with two seconds to go in the first half. That's what you should have been doing from the beginning. Running up the middle. He was going to pass it. But what I say is it better be lucky or good. They're pretty good, and they got some luck as well. And they say McCullers is quite the athlete. He showed it there. The concentration to get that snap before it touches the ground and then sprinting up the middle for the touchdown. The extra point is good. They go four plays, 66 yards. Talk about quick. How about 38 seconds on that touchdown mark? Zach Elder completing the extra point, now 30 to 17. Yeah, that was uh, taking advantage of the blown defensive assignment. They're really struggling with the run in the middle, but let's see. That snap right there, that's a low snap, but it's not a bad snap. Mm -hmm. And as a quarterback, you have to think that. A couple times we've seen McCullers start getting his momentum moving backwards too many times, and it becomes hard to catch. You got to stay in there and make that catch on that snap. That could have been a disaster. Had he not been such a good athlete and able to recover and get to the end zone. So 47 points already in the first half between the two highest scoring teams in FCS in 2015 and 2016 in Prairie View and Sam Houston State respectively. Zach Elder teeing it up to kick it off and Sam Houston expecting something short trying to get out of this first half holding on to that 30 to 17 lead I don't know Eric you think they're gonna you think uh, nah, I think you, you I kick mean, it two, all the way off two, no I'm just saying two seconds that may be too much time for Sam <laughs> it just may be this offense is although Prairie View only took 38 to score on that previous march a little squib kick and gonna be fielded at the 26 and finally pushed out of bounds and that'll do it in the first half no flags on the play and what a first half we have had Sam Houston's Bearcats leading Prairie View 30 to 17 at the break we'll be back with our halftime festivities in just a few moments as we got offense galore here in Prairie View Texas We're just about ready to get started for the second half. Sam Houston leading 30 to 17 over Prairie View A&M here in Prairie View, Texas, along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Eric Clemens. Plenty of offense in the first half from both of these teams, especially Prairie View late. I imagine it'll be much of the same in the second. The fireworks abound. The quarterback's dream watching footballs fly all over the football. Field. Get your popcorn ready. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. About to start the third quarter and what has been an exciting display of offense so far between two of the highest scoring teams in FCS over the last couple of years. Sam Houston State leading Prairie View A&M 30 to 17 but Prairie View gets the ball first to begin hey, hey. the second half. Now you know Texas A&M up the road they're known for going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I think Prairie View A&M's adding a little swag to that back yeah, and I forth. I see that. I, I, I like that lean. Yeah. <laughs> A nice little tradition here. And you know what? I thought the football team started gaining some confidence when the crowd got into it. Hanstein 
Kicks a high end over end, fielded at the four. Big hole on the near side! And brought down, we do have flags on the play as Darius Floyd had that hole close up really quickly. And in on the tackle, number 25, Hunter Brown. Brown, the backup linebacker. He's had a couple big hits in this football game already. There are two fouls on the play by the receiving team. 81, holding, is declined. Number seven, holding, is accepted. After this to the goal, first down. Zarian Holcomb committing the hold. Let's take a look at the first half numbers, and they're pretty good. And you look at it, Sam Houston came in here and did what we expected. 300 yards total offense, halfway on their way to 600 yards. And Prairie Bay and them, they were able to move the ball a little bit, but I think in Portland, it's that penalties. 100 yards worth of penalties for Prairie View A&M, and they start off the second half with another costly penalty to back them up in the battle of field position. And that bottom category drives in less than two minutes, three for the Bearcats, two for the Panthers, who started first and 10 on their own team. The Evan cutting back for good yardage is Stephon McCray, and McCray picks up six on first down. And McCray's the bigger back, and you get backed up in the end zone, you want to bring him in, but I like Tucker. Tucker, the small scat back. Sam Houston was having difficulty locating the small running back in the backfield, and they really couldn't bring him down. I'd be surprised if we didn't see more of Juanya Tucker carrying the ball in this game. Big bubble screen near side. And pushing his way to first down yardage, depending on the spot. Yes, he does have a first down. Is Joshua Simmons picked up five, so they'll move the chains. Picking up the first down, overcoming the penalty with the yard, the field position that they lost. Now, let's see if they can start a drive fresh and get it going. Getting the signal from the sideline, and the colors seem to be a little confused initially. Now he calls it, and we have some movement, and now we get a timeout on the field. Timeout. Preview. First charge of the second half. Wow. 30-second timeout. Yeah. You're in the trail position. In the football game, timeouts are more valuable in the second half than they are the first half. You can go into the locker room not having used all your timeouts in the first half, but in the second half, you're going to need those timeouts. Willie Simmons, the head coach, of course, calls all the offensive plays on his team, and it looked like some confusion. McCullers in there with his hands out as if I'm not sure what this call is. And finally, they had to burn a timeout. And hopefully, for them, won't come back and haunt them later when you really need them inside that five minute mark and later in the fourth quarter. First and 10. Coming near side and met immediately. That time in the backfield is Stephon McCray. And he lost three yards on the play. And Jalen Thomas came up from that cornerback position to stuff that one. By the way, Fairview's allowing some of the air and energy to leave the building. The band came out, did their thing at halftime. Fans were into it. Now a couple hard hits by Sam Houston, and Fairview's losing momentum. Near side, and the bubble screen is blown up right away, and they'll lose more yardage perhaps on that play. Another two. Kalen Riles was the uh, target that time, and he was brought down by Adrian Contreras. You've seen Contreras play a great football game, number seven from a strong safety position. It'll be third and long as they lose five yards in their last two plays. So 
Sellers gets outside of the blitz. Now he's, he's got to keep it. He's got plenty of room on the near side. Gets it all the way out to the 40 on just over a jog. And boy, he had a lot of room on the near side of the field when he got outside contained. It's starting to show that Sam Houston State's playing without their best defensive lineman, P.J. Hall. They're trying to go with the four-man rush. Eric Fowler blitzes from his linebacker position, number one. Poor angle. And the colors make some pay. Easily picks up the first down. Last two drives, they're over 112 yards. The first four, they only gained four rushing yards. McCullers picking up 24 on that run. And a first down run that time gets one for Stephon McCray. So approaching the 11 and a half minute mark here in the third quarter. And this is like a snail's pace compared to what we've seen so far. But Prairie View trying to maintain something and keep a long drive going here out at the 40 yard line second and nine. McCullers will keep it near side gets the corner turns it up gets across midfield before he goes out of bounds at the 47 move the sticks once again and the quarterback showing his athleticism with another big gain on the ground yeah, it just seems like the Bearcats struggle with mobile quarterbacks the rush not able to get there with the four man rush and the athleticism of McCullers on full displays he's able to tiptoe for the first down nice stiff arm as well keeping the tackler off of him, staying on his feet. Now, I think the adjustment by Sam Houston, he started blitzing a little bit. Quarterbacks running all over the place. Keep him in the pocket and hit him. And tiptoeing through a hole along the near side that time, Caleb Broach, a 205-pound sophomore out of Rockwall, Texas. He picked up three. But I like the move. They snuck. DeWanya Tucker, number one, into the backfield. So he's the explosive guy. They set up running with Broach and McCray. When you bring Tucker into the ball game, I, I don't think you're going to ask him to pass block. There he is Floyd in motion to give near side that time, and they tried to get. Dewan Ye Tucker some room. He has very little of it. Picked up two. And it'll set up a third down. And five. And a key third down play it is. I wouldn't have been the run just yet. On that last play, the Bearcats had the box overloaded. I still think Tucker's a threat to run the ball in this situation here, particularly if it's four down territory. And quarterback Lavelle McCullers has proven he has outstanding ability keeping the ball on the ground and running it himself. Play clock winding down. They get it off in time. Blitz is on. McCullers gets away, but is caught from behind. He'll be well short of the first down at the 39-yard line as Jalen Thomas lost the helmet and well, brought him here. down. You go for it here. He picked up enough yardage in which it was... You know, fourth and four, I think you go for it. You know you're out of field goal range right now. I like the aggressive play call right now by Willie Simmons to go for it in this situation. Big fourth down play and a little encroachment has come in trying to time that blitz was Justin Johnson, number 54, the wheel linebacker. And that'll give him a first down. Defense, number 54, out of Bader. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So a key mental error on the part of the Bearcats defense as Justin Johnson trying to time the snap count for his blitz. And gives Prairie View another first down at the 36-yard line of Sam Houston State. McCullers steps up in the pocket, gonna keep it inside the 30, and McCullers first down yardage once again, but we have a flag down on the play back at the 34-yard line. Oh. Royce C made the tackle. Oh, 
Offense number 72. Oh, wow. Corner to foul. 10 yard penalty. Beat first down. Uh, I'd like to see that. The only say, reason I say wow is because that flag came from behind. The quarterback had already passed the line of scrimmage. So unless you see a takedown, it's pretty unnecessary. 72. I mean, quarterback's gone. <laughs> it's tight down there. Good job by the defensive lineman of putting his hands in the air, trying to signal that he was being held. But that's one there where... If you're Corbin Finlayson, no need to hold. McCullers going deep, has a man with a step, but overthrew him as he was looking for Marcus Hardy. Redshirt junior out of Carrollton, Texas. 6'2", 215, had a step or two on the defender, but overthrown. 6'2", 215, you don't overthrow that guy. You give him a chance to come back. That's that 50-50 jump ball situation that you see so much in college football now. And now second and 17. Lengthy drive, especially for these two high-powered, quick attack type offenses. Brave, you took the opening kickoff here in the second half. And has had the ball so far the entire third quarter. Second and 17. Near side bouncing off a tackle that time to Wanye Tucker. And Tucker gets it inside the 40 before he's brought down by Justin Johnson. Picked up four. And they're starting to bottle up Tucker a little bit, so I'd like to see him get the ball on the perimeter. And allow him to go one-on-one -on -one versus Justin Johnson or Eric Fowler in pass coverage. Big third down and long here. See what Willie Simmons and the offense dials up. Three receivers split out top of your screen to the left. Near side has a man at the 30. And boy, if Kadero Hodge breaks that tackle after the nine-yard pickup, he's got nothing but green in front of him. But I like the sight adjustment. That was that corner blitz that we saw McCullers get hit with in the first half when he missed it. They overload it. They're going to bring the cornerback. Let's see. Yeah, that elbow goes down. That's down. Rolls the knee. Daniel Adams makes the key stop there. Fourth down now and four. This drive, eight minutes, 20 seconds and counting to start the third quarter. McCullers rolling, throws, has his man inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Darius Floyd on the catch. Move the chains once again, first down, Prairie View. Move the pocket until Darius Floyd to box up, get open. Good play selection here. Slight roll, and you're gonna see the flash. And once you see the flash, Get it to him in open space. Good execution by Prairie View A&M. Well, they convert a first down. They had a second and 17 at one point in that series. And here's Kareem A. Tucker. <laughs> Touchdown. Get him on the edge and let him show his athleticism. Guy. They had the advantage when he was running in between the tackles. They could bottle him up, call a play to go for the outside. He finds a little bit of daylight, and that's when he's in his home territory there. Running on the perimeter. Eric Clemens, got a ball game here in Prairie View. I was just going to say the same thing. Look at here. A ball game, 30 to 24, after the 16 play, 90 yard march by Prairie View. help dude Brad Brad are you watching nothing comes before coffee my glasses are fogging dude are you mad at me that's why we're introducing a whole new line of espresso drinks from McCafe cafe quality from beans to espresso machines because swole man I felt swollen 
Swole. Not swollen. What? Introducing the all-new Volkswagen Tiguan, the new king of the concrete jungle. Keep your hair strong against hot styling tools with Pantene 3-Minute Miracle Daily Conditioner. A super concentrated Pro-V formula makes hair stronger in just three minutes. Dewan Ye Tucker scores from 19 out, and suddenly, after trailing 30 to 10, Prairie View has scored 14 unanswered, and a mammoth marathon like 16 play 90 yard march in nine minutes and one second they've eaten up that much of the third quarter here to make it a ball game 30 24 sam houston state receiving this kickoff from zach elder jalen harris on the far side and jalen harris has a big hole one man to beat And that momentum just went out the window. Touchdown! And just like that, lightning strikes again, 98 yards on the return. It's a good job of a return right by Jalen Harris, sophomore. Steel High School here in Texas gets outside. Great job by Javin Webb, 24. Staying out front, not afraid to make that block to free. Harris for the last 20 or 30 so yards needed to take it to the house. The kicker kind of uh, forced him back inside, but Sonny Williams could not corral him and make the tackle. So Sam Houston State, the Bearcats, get the big play on the special teams to go back up by 13. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the all-new Volkswagen Tiguan, the new king of the concrete jungle. out of the office but that doesn't mean you're not working at men's warehouse we'll help you find the look to close any deal now it's buy one get one free on select items plus take an additional 40 percent off clearance your clients are going to like the way you look rolling through another grand sam semi-final off the back of nine straight impressive sets ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. And the first kickoff return for a touchdown since 2011 for the Bearcats of Sam Houston State. Jalen Harris. 97 yards officially, so after that long march getting Prairie View right back in it. The special teams let him down a bit, giving up the long kickoff return. And this one coming down at about the seven. Darius Floyd. Floyd cutting back. There's a flag down on the play. We'll see how they sort this one out. Penalties have been a bugaboo all game long for Willie Simmons and his team. So I'm thinking we see flags on special teams and kickoffs. Normally been going against Prairie View all night. So it's going to be strong, man. During the return, holding number seven of the receiving team. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Saturday, we'll have another great matchup for you on ESPN with number 13, Auburn, 
battles number three, Clemson in Death Valley. Our coverage kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, and is also streaming live on the ESPN app. So, you get uh, a crowd that was all into it, swaying back and forth with the swag, and that kickoff takes them right back out of, again, out of it again. Lavelle McCullers looking to get the momentum back here on their second possession. Little screen and a good hole off the far side by Darius Floyd. Not a screen, I'm sorry, the jet sweep from Darius Floyd. Picks up 17, and they're picking up kind of where they left off on the last drive. Well, maybe this offense is starting to believe in themselves. And McCullers took the snap and was brought down immediately. Chris Stewart coming in from that defensive tackle position to sack him for a loss. And yeah, Stewart, tough kid. Had surgery on his meniscus 17 days prior to the very first game of the season. Training camp able to come back and transfer from Wake Forest. Had a good ball game last week versus Richmond. And another long drive would have to have some effect on the general health of the Sam Houston State defense on that field for nine minutes of a drive. In their first possession of the second half, McCullers on the keeper that time gets it close to the original line of scrimmage. And it'll set up third down after a four yard pickup, third and 10. They'll look for Hodge down at the bottom of your screen. He's matched up one on one versus the freshman, Jalen Thomas, number 40, a cornerback. Have to take advantage of that matchup. And a swing out of the backfield has a man open, and he gets good yardage. Where do they spot it? They'll give him the first down as Stephon McCray stepped across the marker for 11 yards, and they move the chains once again. They have been converting some third and long their first two possessions here in the second half. Yeah, they have, and you know, easy throws for the quarterback to make, running back out the backfield, and they use Hodge, knowing that he was going to get a lot of attention against that freshman to go across the formation and pick off a couple linebackers on his way. Now going deep down the field and underthrown. I think McCullers might have thought his intended target, Kadero Hodge, was going to break that route off, and he did not. So it'll be second and team. And once again, we are talking to the Prairie View coaches. They said the one thing they could not do and would not do in this game was back down to this third ranked team. And they were down early 30 to 10 in the second quarter and have not backed down one bit. Trailing now by 13. Trying to put another march together. And shaking off tackles there, getting across midfield is Stephon McCray, and it'll set up third and short. When we talk about slowing down the speed of the game, like that quarterback running back exchange, give him the ball early and he would have taken it off, but watch the hesitancy on this quick exchange. Hold it, hold it, in between. He didn't make up his mind soon enough. That might have cost him the extra step they needed to pick up the first down. Third and a manageable two. And cutting back nicely through a hole up the middle is Stephon McCray. Move the chains once again. First down yardage for Prairie View. And once again, the Panthers marching the ball and moving it downfield easily against this Bearcat defense, which did, as we talked about earlier, give up over 600 yards last week. Yeah, most of that was through the air. They right. gave up 500 plus yards through the air, but also 100 yards on the ground. So they've got some lapses in their defense, particularly that second level versus the run. In the middle, we've seen Prairie View carve them up pretty good with the inside run game. Play clock inside of 10. McCullers off the play fake. Going deep, far side. Too flat. It, it, it's too flat. Maybe that's something he's going to have to learn from his coach. You put more air under the football and allow your receiver to run underneath that he can readjust. If you make a line drive throw that's kind of flat, if it's not a perfect throw, it's just going to be an incompletion. 
That's something they can coach up. Though. He's got the arm strength to deliver the ball all over the field. He was looking that time for Marcus Hardy again the 6 2 redshirt junior out of Carrollton Texas. Creekview High School. And on the run play Stefan McCray off the near side picks up five more. So another key third down coming up for Lavelle McCullers. And we have an injured Bearcat on the field. And that's Chris Stewart who's being attended to by trainers down on the field. Hey, Prairie View's new football stadium, it is gorgeous. It debuted last season. $61 million facility complete with 15,000 seats, 10 skyboxes, and the field house, which we'll now take you inside of, courtesy of our AT&T Field Pass. State-of-the-art weight room they have, new locker rooms, and of course, we're gonna see the perch, the office. Coach Willie Simmons has the best seat in the house. There's the state-of-the-art weight room, and there's the motto in the locker room. I mean, this is one of the top facilities in all of FCS football. Feels like a pro football locker room. I've been in a few. And there's the office where the head coach can see it all, courtesy of AT&T Field Pass. So another key third down play for Lavelle McCullers, who has an empty backfield now. Three receivers, top of the screen, far side, and that one he tried to lob for his intended target, Darius Floyd. Lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Put it up there. The one thing you're still seeing Sam Houston struggle, covering the middle of the field. These linebackers by alignment are so wide, that's why they've been able to run the ball on the inside. If the quarterback just delays just a little bit, and you find a hole within your offensive line, you can pick up a lot of yards. Look, look at the split between number one and number 54 there. That's their interior defense. They're, they're almost 10 yards apart from each other. Key fourth down play, fourth and five. And keeping the ball, McCullers trying to break tackles. He kept it himself, and he'll be stopped well short of the first down. So Prairie View, the drive stalls, and they'll turn it over on down. There was no delay there. You have to let that guy clear a little bit longer. And the motion brought the linebacker into play. See, I think that's what they're talking. You, you got to let him delay. The linebacker's right there. He's, he's got a beat on you. And you missed him, and that's just a missed block as well by number 76, right tackle, Demarion Ward. Sam Houston defense been on the field 13 minutes, 36 seconds of this quarter, but they still have a touchdown to show for it on the 97-yard kickoff return. Now Jeremiah Briscoe and the offense taking over with a minute seven to go here in the third. And they give off the far side to Javin Webb, and Webb will pick up two on first down. And, you know, as long as, you know, 13 points still a little bit of pressure on the Sam Houston offense to continue to score points at a high rate. Herbie and them defensively, they need to stop desperately on this drive. Action over to the tight end, Rogan Henderson on the catch. He had one catch last week, a 45 yard touchdown and the victory over Richmond. That one picked up seven, so it'll be third and short. If you're gonna beat them, what do you have to do? They say we have to tackle the open field. You force Briscoe to throw it early, but they miss an open field tackle, allowing the tight end to pick up three or four more extra yards to make this third and very short. And like lightning, that's gonna that's do the it. That's the third quarter. The third quarter is over. Sam Houston State on the march, third and short when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. 
What a beautiful night for football in Prairie View Texas as we start the fourth quarter with Sam Houston State leading Prairie View A&M 34. Or 37 rather to 24 and first down yardage on that run Javin Webb going up the middle and look at the time of possession in the third quarter but that might look like a big lopsided amount but they get a special teams return on the kickoff and they add to their lead. It, that's what messed it up, but Prairie View really dominated that, dominated that, uh, that quarter. But Sam Houston withstood the pressure, and they still have a lead. They're on the tack. Briscoe hitting a wide open Davion Davis, who gets pushed out of bounds by Will Skinner at the 31 yard line, 23 yards on that hookup. Again, this is a Really up tempo offense. They like to put the pedal to the metal and move the ball down the field as quickly as possible. Usually through the air with the Walter Payton Award winner from 2016, Jeremiah Briscoe at the helm. And on first and 10 from the 31. Briscoe gets away with, for, with it quickly, gets it away, and it is incomplete. Hey. His intended target, Nathan Stewart, but it hit the ground before he came up with it. Ju Anthony Parker was there on the cover. Yeah, Briscoe a little upset. He got hit. You know, trying to throw that ball off of his back foot. That's why the throw was low. And that's what you have to do. You have to get pressure on a guy like that. When he's in the pocket, even if he's completing passes, you got to get pressure on him, not let him feel comfortable. That's one of the few times they've made Briscoe uncomfortable in the pocket as a quarterback. And the handoff, trying to break some tackles and going down, trying to keep his balance. And Javin Webb, Webb picked up good yardage, picked up four. That'll make it third and six. Arthur Lockett was there on the tackle. Lockett, they call the toughest guy on this football team. Former running back. Last season led the Panthers in pass breakups and interception. Leave your comfort zone right now if you're Prairie View A&M. Sell out, play some man-to-man -man coverage, and blitz the quarterback. Now we have a stoppage on the field. Previous play is under review. So that uh, diving effort by Nathan Stewart that they rule incomplete on the field. Replay officials looking at to just make sure it was indeed not a catch. Again, the ruling on the field was incomplete. Jeremiah Briscoe, a transfer, he was recruited heavily by Florida. And Coach Keeler told us a lot about him. I'm trying to see if he was so, down. Uh, I think that's tried Remus Bulmer. Is it. that the play being reviewed? The run play, actually? Yeah, where the knee was down. <laughs> Let's see. Should be able to get a good look right. Yeah, I think. I think, he t I think it went down. Did a good job of trying to balance, but it I was I mean, the elbow close. was definitely down. It's just a matter of the spot. Nothing's down there, but now the elbow is hit, and the ball comes out. Of course, the ground cannot cause a fumble. He's not down right now. Now the that's elbow. Down. Now that's down. Should be pretty easy. Yes, they're trying to get the spot correct. So after they keep the call, which I'm sure they're going to do, then you're looking at third and six, and this is a big third and six. Four. 
Prairie View and them, but I think, you know, what you've been doing all night hasn't After really worked. Further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. We're down. So, so now I think you, you leave your comfort zone because they've been picking you apart all night. So try something different. If they score on you, they score because they've shown they're going to score anyway. I'm playing man-to-man -man coverage and trying to get after Briscoe to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. Now timeout. Oh, wow. Timeout. Preview. So they seemed a little confused on defense. And they're going to come over and discuss things with their coaching Preview, staff. Preview, second timeout. 30 second timeout. Ralph Street is the defensive coordinator for Willie Simmons Prairie View Panthers. And again, a very key third down and six play coming up. Prairie View already using its second time out here with 13.08 in regulation. And those are the little things mm -hmm. that we talk about. This Prairie View ball club is very good. They're going to be very good in conference play, and they'll learn from this experience about getting to the next level of competition. Third and six. And the give, bouncing off some tackles, and good for first down yardage. <laughs> Great play call. That time is Corey Avery. He picked up nine and moved the chains for Sam Houston State. In a gutsy play call, they anticipated that they were going to bring the blitz. They saw it coming from the outside. Caught a little slip draw. <laughs> they know they want to get to the quarterback. They're aiming for the pocket. A little slip draw. Pull the tight end, get to that second level. Gutsy call on third and six. They're rewarded with it. Prisco guns that to the far side. Boy, did he fire that one over there to his intended target. Nathan Stewart, who held on to it for a pickup of five. They say this guy has all the tools. He's got the size and an NFL arm, and he showed you some zip on that throw that time. He gets it there in a hurry. Quick release you fall in love with, but people lose track of the velocity in which he's able to deliver for the football. Joe swings it out, has a man open on the near side. And once again, that's Corey Avery. And Avery gets inside the 10 to the 8. And I believe that'll be good enough, and depending on the spot, it's good enough for a first down as he picks up six. That's great quarterback. Watch him bait the outside linebacker on the blitz. He's going to think I've got a clean look at him. He knows where you are. He's like, if you're going to sacrifice your coverage to come hit me, I'll let you get as close to me as possible, throw the ball before you can change direction. First down, Bearcats. First in goal from the seven. Briscoe, fade pattern, end zone. And ripped away from his intended target. Nathan Stewart at the last moment by Ju Anthony Parker. Well, Stewart's going to be a good one, but this is a great job by Ju Anthony Parker. Once he gets the ball, make him separate his hands, dislodge it, separate him and rip through and able to get the football free. Stewart had his hands corralled around that one for a second, but Parker makes a good play to rip it away. So it'll be second and goal. From the seven. Trying the same play once again. This time he holds on. Touchdown, Nathan Stewart. And that's confidence in your receivers. Not afraid to go back to the well. Strength of this team is their athleticism at the wide receiver position. And Nathan Stewart, just a sophomore, but having a good year. Off to a good start. Look at the concentration. He said, no, nah, you're not going to rip this one away. That is confidence. Going back to the same play on two consecutive plays, and they get the result they want on the second attempt. And the extra point is good. 11 plays, 66 yards for the score. And now 44-24 with 11-20 to go here. 
And now we have a special guest, and yes, she needs introduction. Uh, <laughs> Related to this big fella over here, I'll let you do the rest of it. Give me five. Well, you know, the only person that keeps me in check is going to be my mama. Uh -huh. So I brought my mama on the set. This is my mama, Paula Walker Church. But Eric, go ahead. She doesn't know this. What do we say right now? Give me five. Give me five. All right. So how about this? The five things that you need to know that have HBC ties with FCS postseason. So we'll talk about the Celebration Bowl. Keep things Celebration Bowl, the winner of the SWAT, winner of the MEAC. Play for the National College Championship. The G-Men of Grambling State University won that game last year. Right. The number four thing you need to know, the postseason awards, the Jerry Rice Award. Right. Now, Jerry Rice was a great wide receiver, so this award is for what? Freshman. Oh, I told you that earlier. Yes, yeah, you the did. Freshman of the Year in FCS football <laughs> is awarded with the Jerry Rice Award. All right, we'll come back to give me five after the kickoff here. It comes down in the end zone. And a big hole on the far side coming back across field. It's Darius Floyd and Floyd across midfield. Floyd trying to win a foot race and finally pushed out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Darius Floyd taking that kickoff about a yard or two deep and 85 yards on that return puts Prairie View in great shape. We're going to finish off. Give me five real quick. All right, number three, Eddie Robinson, the Coach of the Year Award. Why is that important? That's given to the coach of the FCS level, the only coach from HBC to win it, Henry Frazier, right here at Prairie View A&M. Number two is the Buck Buchanan Award given to the Defensive Player of the Year. He went to Grambling Buchanan. Number one is the Peyton Award, and we've got the Peyton Award in the house here tonight. We've talked about Jeremiah Briscoe, last year's winner of the Walter Peyton Award. And now first down, going end zone, rainbow and incomplete. Nico Hollins now, the third stringer in at quarterback. And I just have one question for mom. What do you think of your boys? Uh, give me five. I love it. I love it. Every time I see it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the folks out there in TV land love it too, I think, Jack. First time a mom got to see me work. Thanks for being here, mom. Now Thanks I got to go back to work. Me. All right. Had a nice lunch with her earlier today. Some good barbecue here in Houston. Texas, of course, known for its barbecue. Here's Nico Hollins rolling out, going in zone again. And that is off the hands of his intended receiver, Kalen Riles. Unless it was deflected at the last minute, that's a drop. Yeah, and let's talk about why we're seeing Nico Hollins. I think they just wanted to throw. They realize they can throw the football and have some success doing that. And Hollins has those leadership qualities they like to see out of him. Good throw on the run, catchable ball. You have to make that catch. Help out your young freshman quarterback. There he is. And there he is, going into the end zone, <laughs> almost untouched, is Dewanye Tucker. 15 yards, and like lightning, Prairie View gets to within a couple scores. Tucker's going to be a headache for the rest of the swap. I mean, I'm not going to say it, but a little bit of that Tariq Cohen in him, the guy that dominated last year HBCU football from North Carolina NT. Watch him finish the run. Cut there, and then right here. Ah! That cut right there, <laughs> <laughs> that's not easy to do. Extra point is good. And Dewanye Tucker gives the home faithful here at Panther Stadium a little hope. It's still a two-score game. We'll be back. We are back. 10.42 to go. And if my math is right, Howard Grad was at 75. 75. Combined 75. <laughs> And plenty more, plenty more offense to come. Zach Elder teeing it up to kick it off from his 35. Oh, onside, onside kick. Onside kick, trying to kick it to himself. And who has it? Wherever you saying they have it. What a call what that they do call. recover. 
The officials haven't made a signal yet. Prairie View players say we They're have coming it. up with the ball. They came up with the ball. That should be Prairie View. How come they have not signaled that yet? Let's see if he makes it 10 yards. It goes 10 yards. And if they come up with it, oh, that's Prairie right, View football. It was all Prairie View guys around it. Prairie View, a brilliant Good onside field. Field. Ball is covered. 10 yards after the kick. First down, Prairie View. Yeah. And Prairie View pulling the onside kick. They'll have it back when we come back. Football has been wonderful for our family. I have three sons. They're all grown men now. It taught them the life lessons that they'll carry through their, their whole lives. We've had so many great experiences and it's taught us so much. I, I, I'd recommend it. Casey Keeler, special teams fooled a little bit by that onside kick by Zach Elder. Kind of kicked it right down the middle. And once again, Nico Hollins is in there at quarterback. He is a redshirt freshman out of Fresno, Texas, 6'4", 235. Quick pitch. And there's Jawanye Tucker who makes some nice moves on the outside. Two bodies I, around him. I do that for the rest of the game. Prove to me you can catch him. That's just old school sandlot football. Just go out there, give it to him in space. They should have had him for a loss. Instead, he gained five yards. Coaches call him lightning. Great in space with the football, as you have seen. And that time, Tucker. Yeah, I'm, I'm not giving it to lightning. And, and those tackles a little bit, he's tough enough to make through, but I want to give it to him on the perimeter. Give him a swing pass. Lost the yard that time. So it'll be third and six. And a key third down. After that onside kick, you got to take something and do something with it in terms of scoring points. After a nice special teams play like the recovery. On third down. Tucker trying to spin off tackles and just too many white hats, white shirts, orange hats there. And that'll set up fourth down territory. And he was so close to breaking that. I mean, for a huge game, but one of the linemen couldn't hold their block just enough. But when you go for the onside kick, there's definitely no question you're going to go for it on fourth down. So a key fourth down. Fourth and six for Nico Hollins leading the offensive attack. Holland throws and he threw it a little bit behind his intended target. We have flags down coming in very late and it might be pass interference. The intended target was Darius Floyd. Royce C. The Holding defense number 81. 10 yard penalty. First down. So they get the first down by way of the penalty. One of the few times we've seen the flags go in the advantage of Prairie View a and tonight. But, but one thing you got to be careful about, when you've got Tucker in the backfield, they use him chipping and blocking. Get him out. He's a threat. He is a threat. Great speed. Especially in space, so it'll be first and ten. Now, the one thing you do lose with Hollins in the game, the, the threat of the run at the quarterback position. There's another flag down on the play as Tucker once again dancing in between the tackles and getting good yardage, but a flag came in a little late that time as well. First and five, chop block. Offense, number 70, 72, 15 yard penalty, first down. Corbin Finlayson has had a tough day if that was him. He said 77-72. 70, 70 and 72, so that means one must have got him high, another right. one low. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, and that's by definition. If one person's blocking him high, then you can't come block him low. In that case, 
That was a tough break because it looked like Pendleton was blocking somebody else but got pushed into him. But by definition of the rule, that's a chop block. So a key penalty that time pushes him back 15. And Nico Hollins, first and 25. Throwing deep. And he led his intended target, Joshua Simmons, just a little bit too far inside. Simmons makes the dive for it, cannot come away with it. It'll be second and 25. He had a step or two. And that was where you want to go with the football. If they're going to play that cover two, try and help and take away the underneath routes, attack the middle of the defense deep. Still, they attempt to run the speedy but smallish Dewanye Tucker, and they'll lose more yards. So, thanks to the penalty and a failed run there, and they're going backwards. They lose four more on that play, so it'll be third and very long. For Prairie View, third and 29. <laughs> Look at this defense by Sam Houston. Three defensive backs. Back 30 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Hollins on the keeper. And Hollins goes down inside the 45. They think they stripped it from him, but I think he's being ruled back down by contact. It'll set up fourth down. He picked up eight on that play, so still fourth and long. Yeah, you punt it. Fourth and 21. Uh, I, I would punt in this situation here. Win the battlefield position. Try and give them the ball really backed up inside their 10-yard line. I know you want to be aggressive, but this is the right call in this situation. Maybe your special teams unit can make a play for you. Have to hurry up and get this off. And I don't know if they did. Or did they burn their final time? Previous play is on the review. So they're gonna review the previous play, and we'll find out why, as will Willie Simmons. It, it was close going down. Hollins isn't as comfortable running the football as McCullough's has been all night. He never got the ball over to his left arm. He keeps it in his right arm, and the contact is down, and as he's going down, he took that ball from him. Uh, it, it starts to move. I, I think so. Let's see. He's trying. Ball starts to come out before, but then I think he recovers. That's a, that's a fumble. <laughs> that, that is a fumble. I guess the question is, did he get it from him late after he was already down on the ground and get up and start running with it, or will they rule that he was down in, in, in live possession time, of the ball? In live time, he came up with it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, I've got the ball. But then uh, when you slow it down and you saw the ball starting to go down, it did come out. Play does allow you to take another look at it and get it right, and that's what they want to do. And this will hurt if it's yes. a fumble because Royce C was a guy that Prairie View coaching staff said we went after him pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And his final choices came down to Sam Houston or Prairie View a &M. And it hurts when the guy you recruited you thought you were going to have from your school makes a play like that. I mean, he, he's stripped. He's not down. Ball's coming out before. Now, right here, he seems to have control of it as he corrals it in right there. Right now, now, the C going in, him. it's, it's behind, behind him. him. I think when it hit the ground, he, he lost it. He lost bearings on it. All right. It looks like he's going to have it. That ball goes right underneath well, his hip. Right underneath him, and I think it's loose, and C picks it up there. Let's see. 
Heads up play, just a sophomore from Shepherd, Texas. We we're talking a little about Briscoe and some of these other players earlier that they come into a school and Briscoe recruited heavily by Florida, but Coach Keeler says it's Friday night light syndrome and with a lot of Texas kids. They like to play at home with a chance for their parents to see or friends and relatives to come out. And that's why a lot of these kids will select schools like Prairie View a and and Sam, Sam Houston, Houston State. Yeah. And in Briscoe's case, it was after they dropped the football program right. at UAB. At Alabama, Birmingham. And he said, rather go to other schools. You got a chance to come on home, play in front of your hometown folks or your home state. Why not? And he like the opportunity, and he's made the most of that opportunity. After further review, that was a fumble and immediate recovery by Sam Houston State. The ball will be placed on the 44-yard line, first down. And that turns out to be a killer turnover for Prairie View A&M. That was, and that was a football play by Roy C. That was a football play. Quarterback not used to running the football, make contact and strip the ball from him. Prairie View making a strong showing for itself against the number three team in FCS, but ultimately mental mistakes, penalties, key turnovers, special teams failures have cost them in this one. Let's take a look at tonight's Bringing the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's. Jeremiah Briscoe off the play fake, going deep. Far side has a man. Oh, Caught. That kid can play. Nathan Stewart goes up and wins the jump ball for 46. And what I really like about it, he was three yards behind him, outran Briscoe's arm a little bit, and still played big and came back, readjusted for the ball. And he was beat by four yards. Underthrown ball, come back, go up and get it. Look at the concentration. This kid can be special. He and Drew Anthony Parker have been battling all night. And Nathan Stewart has won more than his share of them. First and goal, ball, the nose of the football right on the 10 yard line. Three yard gain that time in the run up the middle by Webb and now not so anxious to put the pedal to the metal necessarily up by two scores and ball deep in the red zone at the seven yard line after that three yard game for Jeremiah Briscoe who's had a pretty solid night he, he put up most of that in just one half mm -hmm. on the third quarter they and touched that, the ball for mm -hmm. 16 seconds maybe and in fourth quarter same thing the onside kick they had to slow him down so it may not look great in his numbers for the Peyton Award. But he still played a good ball game. And Corey Avery that time going off the left side. He's brought down by Stephen Guillory. And that'll probably be no gain on that play to set up third and go. And I remember asking Coach Simmons, you know, why this game? Why do you want to play this game? You know they're top 25 ranked team. What do you gain out of it? And he said it was kind of a measuring stick game. He wanted to see how good his team could be. And I think all indications, they're not that far off. Regardless of what happens in this ball game, this is a team that After can score play. some points. First of the foul, unnecessary roughness. I'm a 77 in offense. 15-yard penalty. Down counts. Third down. Tyler Tesno, personal foul after the play, so they'll march it back 15, and the play counts. So it'll be third and goal now from the 22-yard line. And you know Jeremiah Briscoe thinks, oh, I'll just throw my way out of it. I <laughs> Double cover Nathan Stewart. Uh, he's earned that type of respect tonight. You find him on the field, you say, we're going to give him some help. 
groups at the top of your screen. And they're going for help. him. Wow. And he almost caught that one on the deflection. As he and Joe Anthony Parker were battling over there in that far corner again. Didn't get any help, and he almost came up with a huge play. Stewart trying to add to his five catch, 117 yard night. And so now the 40 yard field goal will be attempted by Trey Honstein. This is trying to make it a three score game. This is important. And that one is going to be wide right. No good. So Prairie View A&M still with a chance. 4.45 to go. Still within two scores. We'll be back. We're back. A running into the kicker nullifies the missed field goal by Honstein. So it'll be a 35-yard effort. And that one blocked. And another flag is down oh. on the near side. Oh, wow, they're going to call the false start <laughs> What a turn of events. Prairie View A&M thinks they have a block, a scoop, and a score. Yeah. It... But Coach Simmons motioning get back down here. This drive just won't end. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the illegal procedure on the kicking team. False start. For the snap on the offense. Uh, your penalty, fourth down. So now they'll move it back five yards. And in case you're, you're wondering, you, know, you say just decline the penalty, get the result. It doesn't work like that. Once this false start play is dead. Yep, definitely movement on the right, on the side, right side of the side. offensive line. And they come in there and get it. No trajectory on that kick at all by Honstein. So once again, he'll try it from the left hash, 40 yards out. And the third effort at a field goal. That one blocked. Wow, 0 for 3. And Prairie View A&M escapes once again. So still a two-score game, 432 to go. Kick is no good. Oh for three on field goal efforts. That last time out for Sam Houston and my Howard buddy corrects me there. It's still a two score game with two touchdowns and two two point conversions. Had they made the field goal, but they did not. So now we know it's a definite two score game. A touchdown and an extra point and a touchdown without an extra point ties us and sends us to overtime. Here's McCullers back on the field and quarterback draw will go nowhere. McCullers back at quarterback. And he is brought down. They're tipping their after hand. A four yard loss. I think they're, they're tipping their hand because when McCullers, he was a threat running the ball, and they brought in the guy that's going to throw it. But when you go back to McCullers, you're thinking, oh, he's going to run it again. Spencer Williams on that. They'll credit him with a sack. McCullers under some pressure, throwing to the far side, has to throw that one away. Under heavy pressure that time as his intended target was Kadero Hodge. So it'll be another third down and long. And one might think that it might not affect timing or whatever, but when you change up quarterbacks like that, maybe it does in a situation like this with McCullers sitting out a couple of drives. I, I, don't, I don't think so, because I think you sat him out just to calm him down a little bit, a little bit impatient. All he was doing was running. He wasn't completing a lot of throws. So he was trying to calm him down and get him more relaxed. Third down, McCullers rolling, open nope. side. Escapes the rush, cuts back the other way. And pure athleticism on the run play, moves the sticks, first down yardage, he picks up 15. Yeah, but why don't receivers he's missing? I mean, take a look at this one here, they're going. You're gonna see the receiver come right open in his face. He's gonna come out, and right now there's a guy open, he doesn't see him, so he's forced to run the football. Going deep, wide open, near side, complete, no. and maybe incomplete. No, they call it a catch fumble. and a fumble. And Sam Houston State recovers Joshua Simmons 
Had it, tried to make a move inside, and fumbled the football away. And right now, the ruling is another key turnover for Prairie View a and well, on the field. Let's review this. As a reception. Then a fumble. Was he on his First knees? down, Sam Houston. I thought, I thought he was on his knees like he dropped the ball. Uh, well, I, I'm curious to see this one. I Previous thought, play is under review. I thought he tried to make a move to get back inside and had, got his trip. Let's see. Catch? No, that's not a catch. No, he, does, he, never, he never really has control. The ball. Uh, he never catches the ball. That's why he kind of stayed down. So they'll get, they'll get another chance at this. He is moving the feet as if he has control, but he's bobbling it right oh, here. He goes straight through. Unless they're ruling, he's trying yeah, he to change he hands. Catch it. Look, he, he's not even trying to get the ball. Had he caught that ball, his reaction would have been, let me get on top of it right away. And I've seen far less convincing plays called a drop. So if you're <laughs> Prairie View, you're hoping it's ruled a drop, not a catch, and a football move and a fumble. Again, the replay here to try to get it right. 317 to go, two score game. Prairie View has been climbing that mountain, climbing that hill against the number three team in the nation all game long, and they always seem to do something tonight to hurt themselves. Uh, you know, we talk about a football move and everything. I think it's this watching that replay, do you think he ever had control of that ball? I think which drives you crazy. I know yeah. the only thing they could question is if he's trying to switch hands right there and loses so, control yeah, even, of it. But it's, even if, if you catch it for that split second, try to split, switch hands, that's not enough time. We'll do see. That. I just don't think, I think that's the control. only thing they could be looking at. I don't think he has, ever has control of that football. I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. I don't think yeah. he really has control of it. But I think they're looking at the replay, maybe trying to determine if he did and was trying to switch hands and got it knocked away or just dropped it. The ruling on the field is a fumble and a recovery by Sam Houston State. I'm a guy that believes that once it starts taking this long, they're looking for a reason to overturn the call, <laughs> but they may not be able to find it. I mean, but I just think, you know, you know football. I mean, I, I don't think he made that catch. He certainly yeah. did not respond on the sideline when the ball <laughs> hit the ground as if he had caught it and fumbled it. He responded as a guy would who thought he dropped the pass without controlling it. And I mean, I've seen receivers catch the ball and try and separate, catch it with two hands, try and separate the ball, and it flies out. And that's incomplete right away. Yeah, he, he never, and you see the hands constantly moving there. When you took a look at that one, the hands were constantly moving. I don't think this angle, the bottom shows us, but you can tell he's constantly trying to get a grip on the football. And he's unfortunately thinking about the move he's gonna make before he really pulls that one in. Let's see what the ruling After is. After review, pass is incomplete. To be second down and 10 on the 33 yard line. Please report the game clock 325. Thank you. And a big break for Prairie View there. And partner, you were correct. And I was also thinking it would have been hard had they ruled it a catch on the field. It would have been hard to justify that as a catch. So the Panthers still have life. And even with that, another missed opportunity. No, it wasn't a turnover, but a key drop on what would have been a long game on that play and put them in great shape in Bearcat territory down by a couple scores. So second and 10, 325 to go. And McCullers on far side and has his man, Cadero Hodge, on the out route. And Hodge picks up eight.
So on third down and short, and I'm sure this is four down territory, down by a couple scores. Colors gives up the middle and pulling away. Trying to find some room that time is Dewanye Tucker. And Tucker picks up 10 more on the draw play up the middle. Yeah, it showed you some strength. And use his size. When you're low to the ground already, five foot six, go underneath them, make him tackle you low, and he's able to run through the arm tackle. Clock not the friend of Prairie View right now. Inside of three minutes, 240 actually. They go in regulation here. McCullough trying to buy time. Throws downfield far side, and we have a flag all the way from the near side of the field. Kadero Hodge was the target on that completion. They're going to call an eligible, an eligible downfield. It took a while. But that's a. Illegal player downfield. Offense, number 72. High yard penalty. First down. Finlayson. Again, a really, That's a really tough seven. night for him with a lot of penalties. Yeah, we've been calling the name a lot of the junior from Jupiter Farms, Florida. So, the center illegally downfield. McCullers did hold it for a while as he bought time and rolled out to his right. Now, repeat first down, first and 15 as we approach the two-minute mark. Got to score in a hurry here if you're Prairie View a &M. Comes near side, has his man. Great speed, but what a tackle on the outside against Kadero Hodge. Adrian Contreras saved a lot bigger gain that time with a shoestring tackle. And Contreras has played a good game. He's been active, hard hitting, nice tackles. And Certainly called his number a lot. Wide open down the middle, but. McCullers threw that one a little low. Did he hold it? Yes, he did. He found his tight end, Cameron Smith. Nope. Now it's ruled incomplete. For a second there, the way the official was moving, I thought they had ruled that he caught that ball, but he did not. So third and eight. And remember, Prairie View had to burn a couple timeouts early, so they only have one. And the slant play is thrown a little bit behind his intended target as he was looking for Darius Floyd. So this will set up a fourth and eight. Royce C, the buck linebacker there in the coverage. You know, under normal circumstances, I might say ball game, but with these two offenses <laughs> and the way they can score, I'm going to wait till it's all zeros on the, the clock to give you a final tonight. The clock winding down. McCullers fires, has his man, and inside the 35, fumble oh. the football. Who has it? And that's going to do it. I and think. that is a legitimate fumble and recovery by Sam Houston State. Another key turnover for Prairie View. And with a minute 16 to go, Sam Houston State pretty comfortable off that turnover. 44-31, minute 16 to go. Williams takes a snap. He drops back. He's got a man downfield. He throws. It's intercepted by Phillips. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's got one man to beat. He's going all the. He's going all the what? Nothing comes before coffee. That's why we're introducing a whole new line of espresso drinks from McCafe. Cafe quality from beans to espresso machines. Touchdown! Approximately four seconds to go. I'm Val, the orange money retirement squirrel from Voya. I represent the money you save for the future. Who's he? He's the green money you can spend now. What's up? Gonna pay some bills, maybe buy a new tennis racket. He's got a killer backhand. When it's time to get organized for retirement, it's time to get Voya. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. 
and of all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known, and if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly, and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything, and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. He once 3D printed a 3D printer. Now he's building a statue for the most interesting fan of college football. Every time I raise my hand, I start a wave. Who's number one? This guy. <laughs> Where do you go, about six, seven? Stay thirsty, mis amigos. Back here on a lovely night for football in Texas, the Black Foxes of Prairie View A&M entertaining their faithful, along with the Band playing in the stands. The marching storm. Been a great ball game here. Great ball game. Plenty of offense, plenty of big plays. And Prairie View, despite being on the wrong end of this one with under a minute to go, has to feel pretty good about playing against one of the FCS best tonight, if not for some mental errors, a lot of penalties. Yeah. And, and their goal is to make it to the Celebration Bowl. Win the, you win the SWAC and you make the Celebration Bowl. And Sam Houston got the test they needed. They came on the road versus a team that was fired up in their home opener. And for Sam Houston, it's all about the FCS playoffs. So I think both teams got a mental victory, but stick with that FCS theme. Let's take a look at some news and notes from FCS. You know we had to get in there. <laughs> in case everybody doesn't know, I went to Howard University. Howard shocked no, the world. No, Kalen Newton was also named FCS Freshman of the Week. And there were four teams that beat FBS teams. James Madison over East Carolina, Tennessee State over Georgia State. Liberty and Howard all got victory. So biggest upset in college football history. history. That's amazing. And they play Kent State this week. See if they keep it going. So there we are. Panther Stadium in Prairie View, Texas saw an offensive show tonight. 75 points combined. Casey Keeler and his Sam Houston State Bearcats winners over Prairie View A&M's Panthers 44-31 your final. For Jay Walker and the entire crew, I'm Eric Clemens saying thanks for being with us here on ESPN. We'll see you around. Welcome into College Football Live. You know, it is rare, Joey Galloway and Trevor Maddich, that a sequel is better than the original. But I got to tell you, I have a feeling this week two slate of games is going to be the Terminator 2 of college football. Way better than week one. What do you say, Trevor? Jen, it's a one-two punch. I love week two. You've got Oklahoma, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Georgia, Clemson, Auburn. I think this is an awesome follow-up from last week. I get excited about ranked first ranked matchups. But I also love week one where Western Michigan is challenging in USC down to the wire to see who wins. I love that kind of football. We were absolutely spoiled in week one. Week two, what do you got? We'll dive into all of those matchups as the show moves on. But we begin today, gentlemen, with fairy dust. Uh, I told our guys to never get used to this feeling, but that, you know, if, if we all thought that we were going to come in here and... Uh, in nine months, sprinkle some some fairy dust on on this team and and think that we've arrived. Then uh, we're wrong. All right. So that was Tom Herman after his team's loss this past weekend. To which Urban Meyer responded, telling this to CBS Sports earlier today. It's like a new generation of excuse. Tom Herman saying, "I can't rub pixie dust on this thing." He got a dose of reality. Maryland just scored 51 points on you. He continued. Everyone wanted me to say Jim Trussell left the cupboard bare. If I heard any assistant coach say that, they'd be gone. You're done. Those are your players. I hear TV guys say, wait till they get their own players in there. They are our players. What do you mean their players? The minute you sign a contract, they're your players. You didn't choose me. I chose you. You're mine. Absolutely. 
Irvin's comments seem to come from out of nowhere, gentlemen, but I guess it does prompt this question. Is the criticism of these coaches making these types of statements justified, Trevor? I think the, the, it's not justified against Tom Herman at all. And I think it's very interesting that he called out his former assistant. Tom Herman was offensive coordinator just a few years ago when he helped Ohio State and Urban Meyer win the national championship. And the fact that Coach Meyer came out and called him out by name and referenced his quote and then slammed it into the mud, I thought tells you something that there may be some things going on behind the scenes that we don't know about between those two. You know, in the, coach, in the coaching world, there is always uh, some things behind the scenes that, that we, we aren't priv privy to. Uh, in this situation, I did not get the feel that after the game that Tom Herman was making an excuse. I, I think in that moment, uh, there is a bit of honesty. I think before season start, when new coaches go to universities and, and they're speaking to fans and, and they're speaking to boosters, and, and they make it sound like uh, we're going to be a really good football team that's going to come out and, and really surprise some people. But I think behind closed doors, these coaches know what they have. Uh, and, and they are accountable for what their team does on the field uh, as far as their players. Now, some of the deficiencies that you have when you get to a school, they're going to be there. It is your job as a coach to navigate through those and find a way to be successful. It didn't happen for Texas in the first game. Not a big deal. A lot of work left to be done. Joy, I agree with you that when I first heard that fairy dust comment, I did not get the impression that Tom Herman was pointing a finger of blame at his players. You and I have both heard college football coaches do exactly that, and it makes our skin crawl as former players. And it didn't feel that way when Herman said what he said. What I think he was doing was brushing back boosters and fans and administrators and people with unrealistic expectations and telling them, hey, wait a minute, this is a program that had three consecutive losing seasons. We will not turn it around in one off season and the first football game. And I think what he's trying to do is buy a little space before the players have to deal with all kinds of criticism that avalanches into that program like it did for Charlie Strong very early in his tenure. Yeah, Trevor, I'm with you. I did not get the impression that it was an indictment of the talent that Charlie Strong left behind when he was fired from the program.